Hello everyone! I'm live! Oh, I was running around like a crazy woman getting ready. Because you know what it's like, right? You gotta get everybody sorted so you can come and grab some time for yourself. So hello, I'm Vicki Booten, if we haven't met before. It's popping up on my computer. I'm super excited to be with you on this beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Southern Ontario, Canada. And uh, I can't wait to see who's going to be playing along, who's going to just watch, because we might get a lot of new people here. And I have a new setup on um, the uh, computer or with my video setup. I, I added an attachment to uh, the tripod, so hopefully we get like the full surface here, okay? Um, but I'm super excited. Let's see what's going on here. There. Hello, friends. Hi, Natalie. I'll watch while I work on some contract stuff. I love it. Um, Natalie is always my uh, right-hand gal, and um, I'm sure if I miss any questions or whatever, she will help with it, but it's going to be fun today. I stayed up very late last night prepping and playing so I could have some kind of... Um, organization going into today so hopefully that I will help you and um, I just have to talk about my earrings today so while I was cleaning up I found a bin or a little container of earrings from my youth so these literally are like from the 90s probably I'm wearing retro Vicky Booten earrings so you see that I have loved them forever they're wood isn't that fun so I, I went into like the archives for today so make sure if you're watching that you're commenting I get a lot of people will just be watching for now I don't think it's a bad idea the first time around um, or you can play along I tried to uh, put up some information a little bit earlier today of what I cut so at least because it will be cut so you'll you'll be a little bit behind but the magic with these live videos is you can pause it and you won't be watching me live but you can kind of pick up where um, you left off so it'll be good and don't panic if you fall behind or anything because this will be here forever and you'll be able to watch it and catch up later so again if you're new here welcome um, I'm very excited I, I really have to start doing some more on YouTube and now that I have my second tripod I'm going to, um, it, they may have been from Pier 1 Imports in the day, or like, do you remember all those like Okaten or whatever, those places? I'm trying to remember, there was another one here that was in Canada that was like that idea. And I used to buy a lot of wood earrings from there, but funny. Only people that are old like me will understand or remember that. Trying to f remember what that other one was, like Okaten, Okaten, there was another one. I was like that but I used to I have cat ones I'm gonna put on one day like the one leg of the cat is long and the other one short do you guys remember having those yeah I kept them all I have like bicycle reflectors like some crazy stuff in that bin sitting over there that are all uh, from my youth but I'm very excited for you to be here we um, will give it a minute so people can catch on or um, pop on and then we'll get started but uh how you guys doing are you having a good weekend uh let me know if you actually made the backgrounds or if you are just going to be doing blanks because you can you can build this from blanks if you cut the sizes that i talked about and then i grabbed some other things that um i'm going to add in there as well so we have some fun things that we can look at and guess what? There's going to be a part two to this or a whole nother video because I was playing and made another one base for this album that we are going to totally freaking mix media the crap out of this. But isn't this fun? So I'm, I throw a shadow in here. I'm getting a new light down here, but I'm hoping you can see this is going to be fun. And excuse the noise because let's just have our like little chat before we get started. So we're gonna be doing some uh, renos and some things around here. This week, um, I'm getting building uh, above my fireplace and then doing our um, bedroom because we have been married. Our anniversary will be uh, in October. 
for 22 years and I have had the same jacked up Ikea furniture for probably the last 25 years. So it's time and I ordered the bed and all that. So make sure you're watching because I don't know, would you guys like to see like a walkthrough on here? Um, I could do a video when it's all done of the before so you can compare because I'm sure your bedroom probably looks similar or not all of you, but some of you might have that kind of thing that I've done everywhere else in the house, but not the bedroom. And then I'll show you the fireplace build and then I can't wait for all the making I'm gonna do to uh, fill my mantle up for Christmas. Cause I told you guys, right? With COVID and being home, which I normally not, I'm usually traveling, I'm on the road uh, teaching that it's gonna be full on Christmas in this house this year. So I can't wait. Um, so I can see your comments on here. I can't see it on the phone. So if I missed anything, I apologize. But let's get started. Are you guys excited to get started? I've cut and prepped a whole bunch of stuff and I'm gonna walk you guys through all of the steps. What I'm doing today is not reinventing the wheel. There are tons of YouTube videos on book binding and making your own art journals and traveler's notebooks and all of that. So again, these ideas aren't new to um, everyone, but new to a lot of you, and I'm just doing it the Vicky way. So the biggest thing is we did all of this awesome mixed media magic on my Facebook. So if uh, it's not here on YouTube, but I might take snippets of it and add it. But we did this thing on Facebook for the month of August that we called De-Stress with Distress, where we use a whole bunch of my good friend Tim Holtz, um, distress inks and distress oxide inks to make a whole bunch of backgrounds in this 8x12 format and some are smaller like you see this one um, some are smaller so that when we were done we could make this journal that we're doing today so there is a lot weeks of work that went into the pages that we did with tons of inspiration so you can find me on youtube at vicky booten artist so find my artist page i will link it um, on in the description so anybody watching after the fact can find it and then on there you go under the video section and you will find actually years of Facebook lives I think I've been doing them for two years every Friday when I was home um, and some on Wednesdays so all of the content that's in here I won't be covering today but you can find all of that because maybe you watch this a week from now and you're like this looks like fun this is something I'd love to do to either get started or get back into or make into a scrapbook or make into an art journal or whatever you want to do the content will all be there and i am an oversharer, so you will find that there's lots of information on my youtube or part of me on my facebook channel or account i guess it's not a channel but i am going to be actively very soon adding here in smaller tidbits so i want to take the main ideas that um, I've shared on Facebook and make them into sped up, quicker, um, just the, the meat and potatoes of all those techniques with all, all the chatter that you know some of you love and like to take part in because I'm very uh, community based and love that um, we talk to each other. But some of you are like, I just want, just want the art. I don't need that side of it. So I love that you'll have the two options. With that being said, that's gonna take me a while because uh, I'm getting some kits and stuff out with my new release with American Craft Storyteller and a Christmas release, which I'm working on solidly in the next week. So anyway, let's get started. So see, I told you I talk a lot, so you're gonna get that. And this is different, right, for me to be doing this on Facebook or YouTube instead of Facebook. So hello, Vicki here, flipping the camera around. I can read your comments when I look over here because I cannot see them on um, the screen here. I did at the beginning and then they went away. So I'm gonna flip it again. Sorry if there's noise around because that's just the reality of when you are doing these uh, lives with me. It's in my house, right? And uh, we're living in the house and the family's all here, so. It's just, I keep it all real, so get ready for it. We'll try not for any bloopers today, but you never know. So I'm going to, sorry, one-handed flip my tripod. And like I said, I'm using this setup for the first time today, so I may have to do some adjustments. So sorry for the Blair Witch for a minute, okay? 
So let's flip the camera and not end it. And I'm gonna give you kind of an overview of the things that are on my desk. So we are going to talk about all of the stuff I'm using today. And hopefully I don't have to go and grab anything that I've forgotten, but you never know. Okay, so let's set this up so everybody can see. I think we're good. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. Okay, guys, I just wanna bring it up higher. Sorry about that. But this is the part of live, right? That we need to make some adjustments and not hang up on you guys. Okay, I think we're good. I just have to remember where to work in what space. Okay, friends, good stuff. So let me just look on the screen. Yeah, I feel like that's good. I just know that I have to move everything up a little bit, okay? And now I can see your comments. I'm just gonna look quickly and just see. I love when people keep it real. It is 100% real. Any of my friends that are out there will tell you. Um, there's a lot of chatting. I love to talk. If it annoys you, just mute me. I, my feelings won't be hurt. Almost caught up with the techniques. And Jana's here. I love Jana. Jana, my friend from Germany, who was on my design team, um, is here. Make sure you check her out. Super talented. Are you putting your Barbie tree up? I will. My Barbie tree will go up. I'll walk through. Yes, so how exciting. Yes, please. Um, what else are we saying? Watching for, with your four and a half year old. I'll keep it PG too, Mallory. It's all good. I've made all the backgrounds, stayed up late. Love it. Okay, so I feel like I'm caught up. And hello to everybody. Normally, you know I like to say all my hellos and all of the things, but I'm going to keep it. So we have a lot to do today. There's a lot to do. So let's talk about things, okay? So the tools that I have here, I may use all of them. I may not. We're going to see how it goes because, oh, look at just a random ring. Let's throw it on. Uh, rolling around on my table. So if you're new, my name's Vicki Booten. I'm a paper crafter. I started with scrapbooking, but um, always have added mixed media and art because it's my jam. I love teaching and I love community. So that's really all you need to know about me. And I love to share and I love spending time with friends. And the plus with COVID is I travel the world teaching. And now obviously, I am at home. So we have just been keeping it going with um, scrapbooking and crafting online, right? So that's what we're doing here. Um, and I love Yana. She's super, super talented and fun. And I miss her every day. So things that I've grabbed. A drink. Make sure you have something to drink. Well, I especially have to have it because I'm not going to get up and leave you while we're in the middle of this. So I have my um, drink. I have my 12 by 12 paper trimmer. I have some scissors. I have a glue stick. I have the uh, Vicky Boot Matte Acrylic Gel. You could use any, let's see, I have some behind me. Let me show you other options because I know that one can be hard to find, but it is going to be in, in stock soon. So let's show you a couple other mediums. Like I said, I have all of, I, I collect, right? So you can use Liquitex Matte Medium. You can use Golden Regular Gel Matte Medium. You can use Americana by Deco Art Decopage. I say Decopage because I think it shouldn't be Decopage. I think it's Deco Page because I'm just branding it as that's what the title of this product should be. So that gives you an idea. I prefer those to Mod Podge. Because Mod Podge really is, um, I think, like a white glue that's watered down, so it's thin enough to brush out. The only thing I find with Mod Podge is it remains tacky, and if you live somewhere where there's a lot of humidity, you will get that in your pages so they stick together. So that's the feedback I'm going to give you guys is why I go with um, the matte acrylic gel as opposed to Mod Podge. But if it's all you have, you can use it. If you only have white glue that you want to water down, you can use that as well. Um, you just decide when you want to invest in these things. Again, this one, and I'm going to list it when we're done because I didn't put anything with links into the description right now because um, I wasn't sure what I was using yet. It is, all of it is kind of on the fly. 
but I will put links to all of these things. So don't start, you don't have to panic to start looking or write it all down. All, everything I talk about, I'll go back in and put links to all of the things, okay? So I have some um, adhesives. I have my tape runner in case I need that. Masking tape I'm going to be using for binding. So I just found a, um, I'd say this is about an inch, wouldn't you say? Looks like about an inch. One inch masking tape. I love this for binding the seams because it's pliable and flexible. So this is a great thing. I found it at my uh, pharmacy. I just was actually mailing packages out and looked to the left and it was sitting on the shelf because the one I had found at the dollar store was only about three quarter inches. So I went with um, this one. I have embroidery floss is what I'm going to use for the binding. And I bought all the colors because everything I do needs to be in a rainbow. And we'll see how well this works. Uh, you could also use Baker's twine or any kind of twine you're going to need. I have eyelets and my um, good old school had it forever. Definitely invest in this tool. I don't care what kind of crafting you do, but this is great if you lose or gain weight and you need to add a, a, a notch to your belt. I love my crop -a -dial, okay? But this will be for punching holes. It punches through almost anything, and it will set my eyelets. So I have that. If you don't have eyelets and you just have a hole punch, that will work as well, okay? So we're going to use that. I think I've gone through everything on the table, right? So now I'm going, I have my corner rounder in case I want it. Corner rounder. But it is, uh, Doris, definitely worth Use your coupon, buy it online when it's on sale. This is a tool, as friends in the community, things I'd always tell you, don't go cheap on your adhesives, don't go cheap on your paper cutter or your scissors, and find basic tools that you will use all the time. Circle punches, border punches, all of those things I love. So moving this out, because I don't need all of it right now. The other thing I have beside me, you can't see, and I know is going to be back in stock, is the We Are Memory Keeper, um, what is it called? The, the, um, the tray with all of the shelves on it, the rolling tray. I forget what the name is. Nat, if you remember, will you help me? I just totally forgot it. But they had to reorder them because there was some warping issues. And I know, I asked, please tell me they're coming back in stock because I use that all the time. No so Can't wait to see what you do with embroidery floss. I'm just using it as my binding, okay? I did buy a big needle if it's easier to feed it through the holes, but we'll see. We're just going to, we're winging it, man. We're just going to wing it today, okay? And um, that tray, I love. So when you're working, I love that I can, it has one, two, three, four, five, six trays. That project cart, thank you that come in and out and um, I love it for storing things that are drying or as I'm working that vertical storage is absolutely awesome so when it comes back on uh, or out I'll do a whole video about how I use that project tray so you can see exactly I'll put one together on the video and then show you how I use it so then you can make an informed decision if you think it's something you want to purchase but I um, love it it's just, it's not out yet. There were some issues with warping, like I said, so they had to reorder them. Um, you need two of those trays. I agree, Nat. I have two. Okay, so let's talk about what I prepped. So I have what we call signatures, because these will be pages in the book. Okay, I have my, um, I went with cardboard, even though I had told you guys if you have the chipboard inserts from the six by eight albums that you do with all the kits that we sell at vickybooten.com. If you have those chipboard in inserts from your um, snap album, you totally could use them. They're going to be a little bit smaller, but not by much. Like it's almost the exact same size. You would need three of those to cut the pieces out of it. I went with this that I found at Dollar Tree in their shipping section. So you know when you go down the stationary aisle and you'll see there's a whole bunch of packing stuff. I found this box that I cut apart, right? I open the box and it is a 11 and a half by two and a half by 12 and a half. And I cut two 
of the pieces that I needed. I have one for today. And then I did this one that we're going to do a whole class on later. Because to me, this is going to be very long because this is gonna be fun. We're gonna do build the base, we're going to paint it, we're going to decoupage it, and then we're going to alter it. So I think that this will be a whole other class. After I did this, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be awesome. So I will do this as another one here on YouTube, but let's just go with a basic today. We'll go with a basic because we have all this other magic going on. Um, you need two project cards. Yay, I pulled, pulled those uh, clipboard from the album today and used. Okay, so if you have those chipboard pieces, you are going to want to cut as close as you can to two six and a half by nine inch pieces and for the spine of the book, a two by nine. That's what you're going to need for your base and you can be cutting that out as we're talking. I would use a um, self-healing cutting mat and a craft knife with a steel ruler. That's, I find the easiest way. I measure it all, so I make sure my cuts are completely straight. But most of this wouldn't go through your regular paper trimmer. You'll wreck your blade. So use a craft knife. You can buy those at the dollar store. Um, I wouldn't waste my trimmer blades that are like 15 bucks here in Canada, right? So you want to do that. I keep the backs of my paper pads. Yes, I had a, I, I posted yesterday a whole picture of, you can go in the dollar store and they have tons of project boards that you can use, chipboard, cereal boxes, um, heavy card that backs your paper pads, anything that is heavy, keep. Make a little box that you store all of this stuff that we can alter because I have some ideas for Christmas that I wanna do. I wanna do a lot of making over Christmas. So aside from the album we're gonna be making with the um, Christmas, uh, extravaganza that's posted on vickybooten.com if you're interested in that but for um, Christmas making I want to do some altered stuff so make sure you're gathering up some and it's great way to uh, reduce reuse and recycle right so those are cut the other thing I prepped so and um, thank you Natalie put it down and you can see that you need two of these right and then I have this here that I will lay on. So when I'm talking about it, here are the pieces that I cut. For the cover, I decided for this one, because I started doing this and I'm like, this is this has to be its own thing because it would take a long time. We'd be here for a long time and it has to dry. So this will be something I'm going to do in stages. Like it'll be video one where we just make the cover, let it dry and then it'll be video two where I show you how to alter it. And there's lots of different binding options that we can use, but we'll get started, okay? And this is corrugated card. I just dropped a whole bunch of stuff on the floor. It is thin corrugated card. It is a shipping box. It's recycled corrugated card. And I just love that I could get exactly the sizes that I needed out of it. And the other reason I use this is because I figured it's readily available. Everybody should be able to find a box, okay? So that's why I had originally said to you guys, um, use the inside of the albums, and then I thought, hmm, it's limiting for people who don't have all of that. So for my coverings, so the outside cover of this album, I cut two of the same pattern of pattern paper. I forget which line this was from, like Wildflower and Honey or... I don't know. It's one of the Vicky Booten. I don't even know. I didn't even look. I just grabbed because I would buy packs and packs of this pattern. It's totally my jam. So for the covers, I cut two pieces at six and a half by ten and a half. You need two pieces of pattern paper or cardstock or whatever you want to use at inches six and a half by ten. I put 10 and a half on here. I totally lied. It's 10. Okay, six and a half by 10. Let's scribble that out. Do do. Oh no, it's not. It should be 10 and a half because watch, I thought we should leave a little bit more for you guys. See how um, 
small the overhang is. So mine, I cut smaller, but I think for you guys, go with this, six and a half by 10 and a half. Now I remember what I was doing. It is not going to fit the whole front of the cover because the spine will cover this. So I thought, why waste the paper, use it for something else, okay? So you need two strips of pattern paper at six and a half by 10 and a half. Choose what you want on your outside cover. So those are for the front and back covers. And then for the spine, you want a piece that is five by 10 and a half. So five inches, and I think this one I did do at 10 and a half. Yes, I did, okay, 10 and a half. And then that will fit like this. The other thing I didn't tell you guys you need is some kind of scoring tool, bone folder, or um, I'll show you where I put, I have this old doodad that used to come in rub-ons from American Crafts. So I'll be using this as well, okay? I forgot to tell you guys, you will need something to score with. You can use, I use a um, pen where I don't put the um, ink out, like the actual um, ballpoint portion, and you can score with that as well, okay? So that's what you need for your spine. So for pattern paper, you need two, six and a half by 10 and a half, and one five by 10 and a half for the spine, which I will be using that side. I love how neutral this is and it's not gonna compete with all of the art. They don't have to be the same pattern. You might not have two sheets of the same pattern paper. One's on the front, one's on the back, doesn't matter. Inside cover might matter a little bit more, but again, I don't care. Do whatever makes you happy, okay? Or use what you have at least to do this as a tester album. Use the crappiest pattern papers you have just to make a base that you might not actually use. You'll just save it as your practice piece. For the inside covers, this is these are the patterns I went with. So this is what will cover my spine inside, and this is what will go on either side. Okay, so it will end up going like this. And that's what the inside of my album is going to be. These pieces are for the spine is five by um, eight and three quarters. And then these two pieces are six and a quarter by eight and three quarters. Again, until you cut your pieces out of your cardboard or what your base is gonna be, you may have some things that you have to alter, but it's a good place to start. It does totally depend on what you're using where, okay? So these are the pieces and now we're gonna get started. You have hopefully um, what you need for your cover. And then let's talk about this. I guess we'll talk about this now. These are my signatures. So if you were not following along, what we did on the Facebook Lives for um, De-Stress with Distress, was a whole bunch of 12 by eight size mixed media backgrounds using Distress Ink, Gesso, like tons. Guys, how many techniques do you think we covered in this? Um, tons, I'd have to say. Tons, we did tons of techniques with Distress Ink. So using different papers, different techniques, and these are what are going to be going inside of my album. If you're new and you're like, I didn't even know this existed, I didn't know Vicky before, you're fine. You could just make the spine with me today and you can go in because this is the magic about, of um, what we're doing today is that these pages will be able to come in and out. You can switch them around, add more. So I love that. So just to give you an idea, these are the kind of techniques that we covered in the De-stress with distress, like some um, white embossing ink and embossing powder with the distress ink. A lot of these we've done front and back. Some I haven't finished the back sides. I can take the pages out later and do it. Or I can uh, use it like an art journal or junk journal and add as I wanna go. But we have a whole bunch. These ones didn't even make it into this album. I made so many that um, I have tons. I could make a whole other album out of this. So just to give you an idea, look at this was a fan favorite. Isn't that pretty? 
So we did that technique. So lots of content that is on my Facebook page. So this is what I made these from, okay? So let's go through and I'm gonna give you an idea. Because we have to do, like if this is, you can always come back, watch later or watch it. If this is like, oh, it's a lot of info, I don't really wanna watch all of this now. Just come back at your leisure when the whole video is done and you can fast forward through what you don't wanna watch. But I took these, scored them, I actually just folded them in half and used a bone folder along the spine. Keep in mind with this, because it will be a junk journal when it's done. These are all my foundations paper, which means, listen, it's a 140 pound weight, very heavy mixed media paper. So when you pile them together, you are not going to have a straight edge on this side. I don't care, I'm totally fine with that. If you do care, you would just go with an X-Acto knife and steel ruler and trim that. I totally don't care about that, okay? Um, hi, I'm mod moderating another group, but wanted to pop in and wish you all creative blessings. Thank you, Kelly. So this is, to give you an idea, I took some of the smaller ones that we've done and see what I was talking about? No art on these. It's potential for art for later. And then just went in and tried to mix in some things that I thought looked good together. And then that's one signature. I scored it, folded it, and put it together. I have five pages in each signature that are folded and put together. Just go through them so you guys can see. So you will or recognize if you did the Distress with Distress, some of these. I will still be adding art. I can add photos later. I can make pockets. I can do interactive later. But right now, we have to start somewhere. And this is just going to be the bones of the album when we do it. Okay? So now, this is... Oh, and if you've noticed, I have four um, stacks of signatures. Because that's what I'm going to put in this album. So see, just go through... Lots of mine are not done on the front and back. If you guys haven't even started this, you could just make blank pages and put them in here. So we're gonna get started right now after I go through these with the cover and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna custom some additional signatures that we can add here. We'll either do that today or I'll do it as a side video because I don't want this to be overwhelming. Hi Kim, how are you? Hello Simone. So. We have all of this. I did like an overlapping one here. Whatever you wanna do. And a lot of this is blank because I thought it would be fun that I could still go in and add more art. I love these bulldog clips that you just put on and it will hold it while you're working on it, okay? So those are my four groupings of five. All of these pages are 12 inches long, folded in half. So they're six by eights right now or smaller because you can put whatever will fit when you fold could even be shorter and we'll get there eventually. But like I said, that's enough info for now. And I have my four stacks that I'm going to put in here with the potential of adding more. Okay. So we are going to move this and we're going to start building the spine or base of the album that will be like this when we're done but not this mixed media one, it will be covered in paper, okay? So I need my masking tape right now, I have my glue stick, I have my, uh, oop, not that one, because that bottle's almost empty, um, matte acrylic gel or white glue, whatever you have, and I have a foam brush. Don't know if I'm gonna use it, but it's here. I also, if I, I want it for speed, you could also use your tape runner. Double-sided tape, whatever you want to do. I do love my glue stick. Okay, so let's get started. We do not need the inside just yet, so I'll move it over to the side. And let's go. I so wish you guys could be talking with me. It makes it so much more fun, right, when we're having a conversation. So thank you for the chatter. The interaction is always awesome um, for these videos because it helps people find us, right? YouTube likes to see that. So please comment away, T speak amongst yourselves. It's a great thing. So I'm gonna go on here now. 
this is the piece that you're not going to see. This is going to be the inside. And I'm going to take my spine and you're going to want to center it on this piece and we're going to adhere it to this piece, okay? I'm going to take my ruler, wherever I put it, and just make sure it's centered. So I have one and a half on this side and we'll move it over just a little bit. One and a half on this side. One and a half. Looks good. You can draw with a pencil around it if this makes you happy, right? Or marker, whatever you want to do, whatever I have here, pen. So once you know it's where it needs to be, right? You could, I know this is up too high, so I will eyeball that. It will matter on the sides more than it does on the top, okay? And then I'm just gonna use the artwork to line up my piece, and I feel like that's good enough, okay? And then let's do this, so when we pick it up to glue it, I can see where it goes. So I'm just gonna trace, like I said, this is the Vicki Booten way. You may watch other videos that have even better ideas. Go for it. You will not hurt my feelings. This is just how my brain works, right? So I'm gonna do that. And now I am going to opt for the glue stick. Do you wanna know why I love glue sticks? Is It is a semi-wet medium. This is a full-on wet medium. So with pattern paper, I love the idea that this is very forgiving. I can put my glue stick, I'll put some on here, and then some on the spine. You want it to be like the consistent, I'm gonna gross you out, of like snot, okay? You wanna be able to see that glue stick on here. The reason I like the glue stick is it's not gonna soak into the um, medium that you're using as quickly as a wet medium would. So when I'm doing a mixed media background, I would totally be using the uh, wet medium. For this, I love, and you know me, if you, I have to clean up as we go because I don't want messes everywhere. So I will wipe up my glue. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this on here. And if you had a brayer, you could totally brayer that in place or whatever you wanna do. But let's put that down. I did not get a bone folder out, but where is my art wedge would be perfect for this. So I'm gonna use this. This is, um, I will link you to this, but it is part of my line with American Crafts. And I'm going to just smooth that out. Oh, see, if you have one of these and you're like, what can I use it for? This is a perfect little thing, okay? So I'm attaching, am I missing anything? What kind of glue are you using? Um, it's just whatever I had. Who I don't even know who makes this. Somebody sent this to me at some point, but you who is what I would buy. I don't even know what brand this is. It doesn't even say it on here. Permanent glue stick, super stick, it's called. And I thermal web. It's thermal web. Okay. So um, but this you who will be fine. Okay. There's some extra came out the sides. I will wipe that off. So this now will be the outer spine of my book, okay? Now, the next step, because we need the front covered before I put the spine on, is I'm going to start, what measurement um, is the score? I haven't scored anything yet, okay? Um, I'll go in, and I don't score these beforehand. When we go to fold it, we'll just go in and score like that. Okay, so you don't have to score. You can if you want, but it can put lines at your top. But just to give you an idea, if you want to, it is uh, one and a half on each side. One and a half. Just, you'll see. I don't pre-score it, and you'll see why. So now I'm going to take, so my spine is ready. It's drying. I need to do the front covers because this is going to, I would like this to cover over this to finish that space. So we're gonna go in and do the same thing with these on the front and back and just decide what you want where. Like mine are words, this paper, so I have to watch what I'm doing. So let's flip and do one at a time. Um, won't matter, right? Let me think about this. 
Okay, yes, you have to think about that, right, friends? So this is my front cover. It's going to be like this. And then my back cover. Is there one I like better? This one is going to be my front. And this one's going to be my back. Okay? And these are my front and back. You want to leave, again, remember, I cut my paper smaller, so you're going to have a little bit more overhang. You're going to want to make sure that you leave about, about a half inch. You will have some more if you cut yours wider, right? Let's do, like I'm going to eyeball it just like this, okay? I'm covering this on when this folds over, so I'm not too worried. Just make sure you know you have one and a half inches here when this goes. So you want to make sure that um, this space for me is going to be about three quarters of an inch. So when it's exposed, this part is has no uh, pattern paper on it at three quarters of an inch. Does that make sense, friends? Make sure, because it makes sense in my brain. I just look like it's scored on the piece you were working on. Oh, um, no, it's not. Okay, I haven't pre-scored anything. I understand. I was not chastising you either, right? You do whatever works for you. So I'm going to do this so that I can glue it on the front and back. Do you notice I didn't measure it or anything? I'm okay with the eyeballing. Again, don't even care if this is exactly the same, just as long as I'm not leaving too much space here that when this folds over, it's not gonna cover um, the exposed uh, cardboard. So I'm gonna do that again and eyeball. Do, 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 do. Okay. Because mine's words on the other side, you really have to watch that it's straight. Otherwise, your words will be wonk when you go to glue this. And also, want to make sure my words aren't upside down, and they are not. So make sure whatever pattern you're using, when you go to do this, it's not wonky. I'm trying not to fall asleep. Had to drop my daughter off at Greyhound Bus at 1 a.m. It And it will all be here for you guys to watch after as well, okay, friends? Who's making? Please, because um, there's a lot of you watching... Who's out there actually creating this or planning on making this? Or you're still on the fence until you see what it looks like when it's done. Could be, right? So I have all of this prepped. I did something wrong. Are you ready for it? This is what a doorknob I am. But I'll, I'm going to do it on here anyway. So, and then when we do the other album, I'll show you. I am a doorknob. I forgot a step. I'm doing old school. But I didn't need to do some of this, but we'll, I'll show you. I'll explain in a minute. That's what happens when you stay up till 4 a.m. You make mistakes, but it's all good. I'll show you and explain another option, okay? So the way I made this album, which actually I'm not, I'm not telling you that. We'll save it for the second way to create one of these albums. Because I actually like it when you're decoupaging. But this will work uh, perfectly with pattern paper. You have enough support. So now when I go to put these on, I'm going to glue this to my backgrounds. Right? And this is, you know, the magic of live or the not magic. When you watch these videos and someone has pre-recorded it, they cut out all the bloopers. You're getting to see the bloopers live and in person. So um, it's not that everybody doesn't make them. You just don't usually get to see them all because they edit it out of their video. So I'm adding glue on my paper and on the cardboard. And I'm going to glue it. Make sure, like the consistency of snot, or whatever you want to call it, just thick. Because if it's not thick enough, it will dry and you won't have enough down here. This is a fun project you can make with your kids too. After you go through it and make at least one of these, this is a fun thing that you could totally do with your kids and you could make mini books out of it. You can gift this. Like I love the idea of um, making your own albums. 
I love making. Um, I have never thought of using a glue stick. And do you want to know why? Because you have perfect adhesion when you use a glue stick, right? I have to stand up for this. I'm sitting, but I want to be able to line it up. Um, you know what else a glue stick is good for? So I sold some denim albums and people were really sad that they didn't get those albums. Like they sold out really fast. We are going to make a custom denim album. So there's one of those things. Make sure that if your kids grow out of a pair of jeans or you have an old pair of jeans you don't wear anymore, keep them because that will be coming. We're going to cover an album in denim or fabric, whatever you want to use, right? So I feel like, look, I have good adhesion. I'm happy with that. Okay, that's one side done. Do the other. Standing up now. I'm making my own album for Christmas this year. Totally going to do a whole bunch of these. So this is a quick way, and we can get into some funkier patterns. You just watch. It's going to be fun. Lots of stuff coming. Um, but I love this because I'm sure, I feel fairly confident that you have lots of pattern paper laying around or it's easily um, accessible. You could cover this with whatever you want. And now I'm just gonna put it on. I See, I have tons of space here, but it's never enough, right? You could have a huge table and you'd still run out of space because I think as makers, we take up all of the space available to us. But I cannot wait to do this now. I feel this is the way to get you guys into trying this. And then we can totally funk out a mixed media one. Oh, and you just watch. We're going to open the door to a whole bunch of different book binding things. I actually want to do a full online class of different ways to bind and make your own albums. I think it would be a lot of fun. So let's put this down now. And you have to move a little bit quickly, right? Because you don't want your glue all to dry out on you. Okay. There again, just make sure it's all adhered. Flip it. I have glue on my fingers, so I'm just making sure I have no bubbles. It's um, perfectly adhered. This is where this art wedge comes in magically, I have to say. You could use a brayer. Am I missing any questions? Um, can we, uh, we can cut out jeans section with the pocket. You watch, you watch. We're going to totally make a denim album. So now all of our pieces are ready. We are going to, um, put this down, right? It's going to go like this, but we have to adhere the pieces. So what we're going to do is watch when you adhere this, because this has to close, right? We're going to glue it down like this, and you have to make sure you line it up. I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch between the spine and the covers. If you don't, when the page closes, your paper is going to rip, okay? So let's go and do this, but let's put our adhesive on this piece here. And before you commit, we'll get it on here, but we do have a little bit of working time with the glue. So let's put some on there. I'm not going to put it on the front cover. I am only putting it on here, and I already have it along the spine, okay? I have a strip here. I don't want to put it on the paper because I'm afraid um, I don't want mess. I like it all to be clean, so maybe a little bit, but not too much, okay? So get it on both sides, top and bottom, not above, but top and bottom of the strip. Make sure it's adhered right to the edge. Okay, and then I'll show you what we're doing. I need a wet wipe because I have to clean this glue up. Where'd my lid go? Because I don't want to make a mess, but I need to work fast. So let's just wipe my background down. So if I did get glue on there, it's not going to end up on my cover and make an ugly mess. Okay. Now, make sure you have it front and back. So this is the back, and I'm going to line it up with that eighth. About an eighth. You don't want it too wide, okay? And then let's do it on the front, and I'll show you. I'll bring it up closer to the camera so you can see.
Okay. Glue snot everywhere. So look at this, friends. You ready? Can you use an edge piece of the cardboard as a spacer? You most certainly could. You could make yourself a little T-square if you want it to be perfect like that. Okay. So see, there is a little bit of a space. So when our covers close, we aren't going to make a mess. Now flipper and make sure you have good adhesion. Oh, I love this pa these two papers together. Okay. Good adhesion. You could use a brayer. It will all need to be cleaned up after, but it's good. Okay. So see, so you can go in after and we can, um, so let's talk about this. If you have one, these are on vickybooten.com too. If you're uh, going to order the Christmas kit or anything and you have not purchased a brayer or good scissors or I love this ruler. All of these things are on my website, okay? This is the new uh, Supreme Ruler from We Are. Love them, okay? So you could use your brayer. These are why these tools you've had forever, why you don't throw them away. But now I have great adhesion. I'm very happy with that. Look how fun that is going to be that we're making ourselves, right? So that's why when you see papers like this, like in my releases, I always have good neutrals. There's a reason. Because if I go to put something really pretty and um, lots of pattern and color, I like rest the eye patterns that make um, paper layering easy. So when you see things like this, that's one I don't just buy one of. Like even with Storyteller when it's coming out and everybody's like, what papers aren't in the kit? I would buy multiples of your favorite because I feel like you will use them. You know, when you, we do our Storyteller Weekend, uh, it's, we're going to use all of the stuff. You're not going to have stuff left over. Anybody who's done my album kits before knows I use everything. So uh, I am finding that it's not a bad idea that you go and place your orders for more of it. I don't think you will regret it because it's very fun. And this line sold out faster than anything I've ever done. I would say a week and it was sold out at American Crafts. It's crazy. Um, so yay, fun, right? What is a turquoise tool? It is a Vicky Booten art wedge. I will link it because the thing, friends, please don't link anything in here. If you follow my links and shop at any of them, I use affiliate links and it helps for me doing these free online videos. If you're going to shop there anyway and you follow my link, it doesn't cost you anything, but um, I do get affiliate dollars back, so it's super helpful when you guys do that. Again, if you don't and you choose not to, we're still friends, um, but I will put all the links to everything I've used at the end and you'll find it in the description because I think there's going to be lots of things that we need to share that we're going to discover as we're going today, right? So I am going to come here now. So you have options that with the masking tape, sometimes I find that a little piece here will help with my binding. So I might put a little bit in here just to add a little bit more security to my binding. This is what I was talking about with it being loud in here. And then I'll just go in here and burnish that. Okay. But I like that this will help. No leftovers. There never are. I use everything because, and oh my goodness, I'm so excited for the Christmas one and Storyteller because it's an opportunity for me to show you how I love to layer. Like, and where it's, it's never enough, right? I like to put lots and lots of layers on. And that's what's fun about the kits. So see now by going in and then just helping with a little score, we're making that book cover really nice. Okay. So now we have to go in and do our insides and we're going to do the same idea, but opposite. We, oh, not yet. I'm lying. We have to fold this over first. Sorry. I got a little ahead of myself. So we are going to now take this and I'm going to burnish the edges to start to 
fold my corners, right? So I'm gonna go in here and burnish all of the edges and start folding my corners over because this is going to wrap around the album. Is anybody, did anyone do the last class that I did like this? Where uh, we covered the other junk journal that we did? Or is um, this brand new for anybody out there? Can you put the sizes of each piece? They already were posted at the beginning of the video. So it's going to be one of those. And I think I posted it in the description, okay? But here is a little reminder for the pieces that I did, okay? It doesn't have the chipboard on here, but it has all the pattern paper. And you can see the chipboard. It's actually right here. But all of it is listed at the beginning when we started the video, and it is in the description of this video. So see what happens here now when we get to the corners, right? You're going to want to trim some of that off so when we um, fold them over, the corners will be nice and mitered. So look how fun it's turning out though, right guys? Look what you can make. I love this. So we're gonna go in now and I'm going to snip on an angle like this, a little bit of that off and let's see if I made a mess or not. No, it's pretty good. And then if you aren't completely happy with it, just clip a little bit more. Okay, just till you get happy Till you get happy till you're happy with how that's mitered okay you're going to do that on all four of the corners go in and cut don't cut it right to the edge because you'll see that little bit of chipboard okay so when you miter you will have that perfect little corner and we'll do this one and then I'm gonna to have to get a paper towel and clean up my desk because anybody who has done this stuff with me for a long time knows that um, I am a clean crafter. Like it bothers me when I can feel like little p bits on the back of my page. So let me grab a piece of paper towel. Brand new for you, I love it. Once you do one, you will want to do more. It's true, so true. And I have lots of plans for us friends. So cleaning my desk off now. Before I move forward, I need to clean this up because it's like when I was a young kid, if I ate an orange, I was that kid who would freak out if you didn't wash my hands because I'm like, ugh, and I'm sticky right now. The glue is everywhere. So I think it's perfect time to just wipe this down. Okay, wipe it down. I don't need this anymore. Uh, we'll decide if I want to corner around in a second. And let's take a one second break while you guys are catching up and clean the work surface and organize my bits because I really do like to be able to just find everything. So I did not end up using this, okay? Didn't use this. But we will use it when we do the next mixed media album. And you will see. And that I like because it gives you time to find it if you didn't have it already, okay? Okay, I feel better. Sorry about that, but there were little nuggets of stuff all over here, and we needed a clean surface. Yeah, my perfectionism is coming out, right? So now I'm gonna take that paper towel and wipe all those bits off of here. You see them flying all over? Every time I was touching it, it was annoying me. Vicky's crazy is coming out. Okay, there we go. All right, I'm happy. So now what I'm gonna do is take this and glue it all down. So we're gonna take it. You can glue it with glue stick, which I'm really liking, so I'm just gonna keep going with the glue stick. Or you could use double-sided tape, your tape runner, right? So are we, did I miss anything? I wish I was a clean crafter, I'm a messy crafter. I know, and it doesn't make sense, right? Vicki, these are how we made them back in the 70s in high school. Yes, this, like I said, I'm not reinventing the wheel. Getting my signature pages ready as I watch. I love it, Anita. Did I miss anything? Ask me now, because I'm looking. If you wanted my attention, I'm looking at the screen, okay? 
You're such a messy crafter. I am. Like, if you look, there's a mess everywhere. But every time I start a new project, I have to clean up. I just feel like it puts me in a better brain space. And we all have our thing, right? I won't judge you. If I came to your craft room as a surprise, like, you know, that um, house cook or home cook, and he'd just show up, that cute guy from um, Australia would just show up at your door. Um, although I don't care, he could, my house could look like a mess and I would have let that Curtis guy in. Uh, if I was that crafter, wouldn't that be a fun show where I just show up at your door and we do some crafting? I would not judge you if your craft room was a mess and everything was on the floor because you do you, right? Um, but what was his name? Curtis something. Curtis, gosh, you're gorgeous. That was his name. So I'm going to go through and put my adhesive everywhere. Because I would like to be able to, when I go to start putting the edges down, I can just quickly go around and do this. So a little bit on the paper, a little bit on the cover, or on the chipboard, and now we're going to start folding in. Okay? You need to make that show happen. Don't you think it'd be fun, Curtis Stone? Oh my goodness, I love him. Um, and I just show up at your house and go, okay, what are we going to make? Oh, that would be so much fun. So now is when a bone folder would be your friend. I will use my art wedge, but I can start putting this over so it's nice and sealed. And decide if you want to start on the side or on the front, and your finger will help. Okay? But I now that I did, I'm going to do my top and bottom first because that's how I started. If you started on the sides first, and do you see how you're taking the edge and pushing it over? So I have a nice, clean edge, okay? So then just go in there. Your bone folder would be magic, whatever you have, that just kind of burnishes and makes that glue start to, and then you're going to go in here after. We can just start it and burnish so we don't tear the paper when we go. I'm gonna to go to the bottom now so my mitered edges finish the same. If you start it on the side, fold both sides, then top and bottom. There is method to the madness, friends, and you just, if you're watching my video, I just do the things that I think make things perfect and clean. I like that. So I will just tell you those tips. Like if I'm starting at the top, I'm gonna to go to the bottom next. I'm gonna do my edges and I've glue all over my fingers so you know we will be cleaning up again when we're done. If it doesn't bother you, you just proceed as you're going. But I want that glue to be in there, so I'm doing that. Now I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna miter my edges or do the sides. And then I'll just make sure, oh, they're so nice and clean. Do that, use your art wedge, use your bone folder, whatever you have, so you have nice, clean, mitered edges. Look how fun that is. Look it, look what we're making, friends. Uh, better put some Diet Dr. Pepper in the fridge just in case you decide to do it. Oh my goodness, do you know the fun we would have? And you'd have to go buy some Depends because anybody who crafts with me or knows me in real life, just be ready for it. I like to laugh a lot and I like to make you laugh and I like to hang out with your families. So it's like that, like the nanny show that used to be on, but it would be the crazy crafter, right? How fun would that be? And I would just randomly show up at your house and we just make stuff, D decorate, do all the things. Look at that friends. Look at the, what we just made out of some stuff from the dollar store and your favorite pattern paper. And then see what I did. Oh, it's not attached. So a quick cleanup because I have glue on my fingers and I find I don't want to make messies. My son just said, come to Arizona. One day, I love Arizona because I go and film at um, scrapbook.com. So we could put some kind of impromptu class together because there are a lot of you guys from Arizona that buy my kits. So I have to think Arizona, Texas, California, all over the US, Canada. So we will, when I can travel again, man, I'll take it on the road. And then I'm going to, we've talked about it, that I'm gonna do an event weekend here in near Niagara Falls. 
where you guys can come and uh, do some crazy stuff with me. But just so you know, if you're a scrapbooker, you know if you come to hang out with me, we're going to make it more mixed media because I feel like when I have you right there that I can hold your hand with through it, that I'm going to show you that there's a world, you can do both. I'm not poo-pooing the scrapbooking because I do love it. I just want us to revolutionize how we um, do photo-based scrapbooking. I don't feel like it all has to be 12 by 12. We could make albums like this and just fill it with photos. Wouldn't that be fun? Near Niagara Falls, it is. I live right outside of Niagara Falls, Canada. So look it. Look how fun out of freaking chipboard or cards. What is this called? Corrugated card I bought at the dollar store. Look what we've made so far. Okay? And I'm going to show you different ways that we can do different binding in here. What is the tan mat um, you use during your messy painting stuff? Actually, these are on my website. I love the white one. So this is a sticky thumbs mat that's up. I think I have them in the store still, vickybooten.com. And the other one is a Ranger, Tim Holtz one. They're called craft mats and everyone who does messy needs to have some version of this. This one on the back here is, uh, was a Ken Oliver one. I don't think you can buy them anymore. But I like this, but it's very sticky because it sticks to your surface. So I like to have this down on my work surface. And then these are what I can move in and out and do technique on. Um, you should come to Waco, Texas. I have been to Waco, Texas, Wanda. I do cruises out, out of Texas all the time. So... Um, I had classes booked in uh, Texas at my little craft shop or the craft shop, the one that has that huge washi wall, and it had to be canceled with COVID. So um, I will be back. So don't you worry. And then that's great. I always said I wanted to do an event in Waco because what's nice is we could go and visit Chip and Joanna, right? And go and eat the best cookies I've ever had. <laughs> So I hope Germany is on your list. I would like to make it back one day. It was on my list, right? But unfortunately, COVID just did all of it. Uh, took it all away. But I do scrapping cruises with, um, oh, I just forgot. What's it called? Uh, cruising crop. Cruising crop. And uh, we have one, well, we have two planned for next year. I don't know if they're both going to happen. Um, but... I am hoping that the one in um, that's going to Alaska is going to happen. So definitely check those out, Cruising Crop. And just to give you an idea, like as long as, like I said, um, God willing, we can do it. So I'm going to test a rounded corner. I'm going to find a scrap and see if a rounded corner will work on this without me exposing this. So let's see. Uh, but when we go on those cruising crops, oh, I think it will. And I like that. So you guys decide what you want to do. It's your um, pieces should be deeper than mine were. Remember, because I changed the dimension. Mine were 10 inches and I changed yours to 10 and a half. You should be fine. Hi, Julie. How are you? But when we cruise, we have the best time. Seriously. And what's nice with those is you can bring your family because the only time we are actually, well, that I'm in the crop room, it's open 24 hours. You can be in there as long as you want, is days at sea. And then we go on excursions and do photography stuff. It is a lot of fun. Look at that, friends. I like the rounded corner. So this is going to be my inside cover, and I'm really digging this combination. Yes, Julie has, Julianne has been on my uh, one of my cruises. Seriously, and you know the fun thing is is I don't know if B's out there. She's probably not because I know she's pretty social She's probably out doing something on a Sunday But I think B has been on seven of my cruises and what ends up happening is the ladies book before we get off the, the um, Boat for the next one We literally all go and book our next cruise so we can get all of the uh, extra bonuses So see how this is gonna work friends Look how fun this is. That's what it's gonna look like finished so let's just glue. Um, it should be a nice, 
a cruise with you. We have a lot of fun. And Alaska is going to be the best because we're going to be doing photography and lots of things. Um, and here's the thing. If you book now, you have until, like I think it has to be paid a, a, a month or two months before the cruising date. You can put a little bit on each month. So I love that. So anyway, now I have my inside portions. These will go down first and then the spine. So everything is clean and finished. So let's go on here and start putting our glue stick on or however you're gluing it. I hope Alaska happens. Me too. I have one for Mexico in, um, so watch, right? Don't put it too close to the edge here because you don't want gluey mess. Keep your stuff clean, friends. I'm gonna run out of glue stick, so I have to make this work, okay? If not, I'll just go to something else, but I did not buy myself a new glue stick when I went out last night, so, or yesterday but we will do the thing. So don't forget, pick where you want. I know I want that one on this side. This is where I will be generous with the glue right to the edge. Look, I'll have to turn around in my drawer and see if I have one with me here. I'm sure there's someone, one somewhere in the house. I just don't know if it's right here. So I'm gonna put it on though before this glue dries, right? So I have glue, this inside cover. And we're going to put it down close to the edge. I don't want to cover my, um, I want to make sure it's all finished nice and pretty all the way around. The other magic thing with glue stick is it's forgiving. You can move it around. Have you noticed that? But look at this. I love it. I'm going to use my brayer. There's so many things we need to learn together. I want to get you guys doing gel plate printing and pulling prints with me, mono prints. It is one of my favorite things. It's going to be a class. If uh, you're new here, my plan is to do over Christmas to get posted so it would be a great gift is, um, oh, I have a school glue stick. This is dollar store, so we'll see. I'm hoping it's not dried out. Um, we're going to do a whole photography-based photo printing and editing photo class. So my plan is to get that posted so it would be a great gift for the month of December and then the month of January and into February will be like a four week long uh, class learning how to print photos at home, how to edit them, and all of it is using your iPhone. So just be, if you're new here, watch for that. You want to make sure you go to vickybooten.com and sign up for my newsletter. It pops up right away, prompts you if you want to sign up for the newsletter um, so that you can get all that info. And as well, I will be posting it on the blog section of my um, website. So the details will be coming. But people have been asking for that class forever like something that's photography based. The other thing is if you're not a scrapbooker, it's still something I think is great because a lot of us are not printing the photos off of our phone anymore. Sorry, I'm working away if you're asking questions. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. I'd love to, yeah, it's gonna be fun. And all with your phone, I'm not gonna be using a camera. So just be aware of that because I love that I can share the apps I use with you, the places that I use to print my photos. Um, the home printer I use, I'm going to wipe that quickly. There's glue on my brayer, so if I do it quick and wipe it off, I will get my glue stick off there because that's who I am. You're, you're meeting the real Vicky. There's no way that I could, that would not bother the heck out of me. And because I know it's probably on the brayer, I'll give my brayer a wipe. So you can hear, possibly in the background, my husband and son are bringing in I, the um, product for my Christmas kit that I'm going to be doing the weekend. With It's a class kit. Um, all those boxes arrived. They're bringing those downstairs because Storyteller arrives on Tuesday. I will be packing all of that up and starting to ship it. So if you guys bought either of those kits, they're going to be coming your way very soon. And this... Some of you pre-ordered this stamp set. It's arriving on Tuesday, so you're gonna be getting lots of stuff in the mail. If you've been messaging me about it, it's all coming. Um, Samsung, 
I don't, I only have an iPhone. So there's the problem, Robin, is I don't know how to use um, Android and a lot of the apps I use. I don't know if it will work with both. So you can try and then it's just your decision. But um, I'm an iPhone user, it's all I know. So I'm gonna put this on now. You wanna make sure, right, that I'm gonna line it up with uh, the base that's here. So when you lay this down, you wanna make sure you line it up with the spine that's on the top. And did I cut this too small? No, I didn't, okay? That's how it's gonna go on here. And make sure it's straight and it should cover everything. Okay, that piece is gonna go on next. So I already have lots of glue stick here. I'll put it on the edges a little bit. I know that that will make people who are Android users not happy, but I can't teach what I don't know. And uh, you can try it, but um, I'll have to, when I do it, we'll have to see if I can research and find the apps. But I know some of the apps that I use are only for um, iPhone, like some of the editing apps that I use. I know, and I think a couple of them have tried to do Android, but it hasn't worked out, I don't know why. But um, I am iPhone user because everything I use is Apple. So that's why I just, iPhone is what I know, okay? Now that glue stick just bit the dust too, so let's see if I can not get some more of this out. Because I'm done after this, right? So it's okay if these bite the dust. Here's another trick too. If you had a piece of scrap paper down, you could um, do that with your glue stick and you wouldn't have a mess all over your non-stick mat because every time you use it, you wanna clean up. Otherwise it's gonna transfer onto your pretty cover or glue right to the background and that won't be fun. We'll figure it out. Um, and I'll do some research before I even plan to do the class, right? So here we go. I'm gonna line this up. And before I com completely commit, I wanna make sure it's lined up on top and bottom. It's not, it's on an angle. So let's fix that. And that's what I said, the glue stick is very forgiving. You can move stuff around, which is very nice. So now let's go in here, brayer it down, make sure you get right on these edges so they don't lift on you, okay? Oh, I love this, my friends. So now we're going to go in and gently burnish here because then before my glue completely dries, I can see if I get any bubbles as we fold, okay? Oops, I almost tore through it. Be careful, don't do that. Don't do what Vicky's doing, okay? Another thing I like to do is I'll take my ruler and kind of press in there too, okay? That's actually a really good idea. The ruler is very forgiving if you're a little strong with your uh, binding. But then I will have nice, right? And I kind of like to do this and then like this on the front. And now we have our own book cover. How fun is that, friends? Um, email Vicki at Vicki Booten Kits. Um, it might take a few days for her to get a response, but that's the best way to get, yes. To, but the newsletter, are you not getting it already? On the website. So this last newsletter, I, I found a new section. So some of them bounce. And um, I have to figure out how to fix that. But sometimes your um, email provider will kick the newsletter back. So a lot of them that you guys who've been emailing me, um, are in there. I found why it's, I just don't know how to fix it. And if I send multiple newsletters and they're bouncing, it does something permanent. So we'll have to see, but I don't send enough newsletters where it's an issue. It's something like in a 14 day period. And I'm like, well, I'm not that frequent, so it should be okay. But I did find that there is a section where emails bounce and then they can be a hard bounce or a soft bounce. It's, I don't know, it's all technical jargon as far as I'm concerned, I don't know, okay? Yes, you're in, I think, right? Um, when are you planning to do the denim album? What, what do you mean, like from scratch, Tamara? I don't know. I have uh, two online classes to do, two other huge events, an anniversary. Who knows when that will happen? My life is crazy sauce, so we'll see. But look how fun this is, friends. 
Isn't that fun? And, and the layout kit that just went out, the Heidi Swap, and if that's something you're interested, they're still in the store. Um, it will not be a live class, and the denim album will not be a live class. I just don't have enough time to do both of those. I can't do all of the things. So uh, the instructions are very good. I am going to do a video walkthrough of the projects, so you have like a um, live version of the uh, instructions, kind of, like an image. But I won't be doing it as a live class. Isn't that fun, friends? But yes, we're going to be doing so many fun things. I'm going to be sharing the videos as I decorate this house. I think you guys will be excited about some of that. It's fun. Um, lots to share. So now we have done the album cover. So there is lots of different ways that you could put binding in this. But we're going to do, I think, one of the simplest, most forgiving, and my favorite binding for mixed media type albums because I can add and take pages away. So it's not a permanent one. And it's this was not a lot of math. So I find that this is very fun, easy way to make an album cover. And I love that um, it's on a cardboard, right? Fun. I want to see the Barbie tree you have. Yes, it's very fun, my Barbie tree. Um, I bought a white pencil style Christmas tree, and it has um, like iridescent pink in the branches. And then I have collected Barbie ornaments for the last... I don't know, um, 30 years. So needless to say, I probably have s at least 60 Barbie ornaments. So my tree makes me very joyful and it will go up very early so I can enjoy it for a long time. But yes, I love her. I love Barbie, everything Barbie. Barbie clothes, Barbie pencil cases. It just is a reminder of the joy that that doll brought me in my youth. I loved her. So what will happen now, these signatures are going to go inside this album. And I feel like this is going to be enough. Right? But look, it fits. So here's the whole thing when you're doing an album like this. You need to make sure your pages are smaller than the cover. So when you put your binding holes on here, these can still slip through. Because that's what we're going to do. The style is going to slip through. Okay? So we're gonna go now and we are going to put um, some holes in the top and bottom and I'm going to put some eyelets in here. Now there's different ways you could do this. You could do four eyelets across the top and four across the bottom and put a single signature in each one. Or you could just do two and we can join um, two signatures to one. Does that make sense? So I'm going to start, I'm going to do this one just with two signatures. I just decided so, or two binding strings. So I, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So we know that this is eight inches in height. And our spine is nine inches. So I am thinking when you look at it, right, you could take this here and you can mark top and bottom. You don't even need to do maths, right? So we know that I could put an eyelet here and I can put an eyelet here. And then the biggest thing is you want this to be straight. You don't want your eyelet to be um, a quarter inch from this side and then three quarters because then your pages are going to go in the album like that. So your biggest thing here is making sure that this is straight. So when, wherever you measure your holes to punch, so let's say this one, let's do easy math. Let's say this is going to go in, because I'm only doing two. So I'm going to go in a half inch on each side. So I know my top binding hole, and I'm measuring it from that um, score line where the, the page will turn. I'm going to put it a half inch here. So I know I just drew a dot here. You can use a pencil. I don't care about that, but uh, it might really bother you, so just watch. It's going a quarter inch and, or half inch and a half inch from the top. So half inch from the top, half inch from the, um, what do you call that, spine 
edge. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Find your spine edge, and I know that it is going to be half inch. Use a pencil if you don't want to eyeball. So if you make um, an error, you can still erase it, okay? Half inch and half inch, and you're going to do that at the top and the bottom. So I know this has to move over a little bit. So I know this one is here, and this one is here, okay? And I'm going to do the same from the bottom. Half inch, Well, and look, I kind of have an idea. Do it so you have another straight edge, because I have that straight edge reference. So I will do that like this half inch and a half inch and before I commit with anything and that was actually perfect that one much easier to do is make sure you test see I'm a liar I think half inch is a little tight so when I punch these holes I'm just gonna move it up a little bit so instead of a half inch we're gonna have to get into um, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven eighths. Seven eighths. Um, I will just eyeball that. When I punch this hole, I'm gonna move it. So where my mark is, I'll just move it above that one and above this one, and then I should be fine. But it's gonna be a little bit too tight. The math, I was a liar. I lied right to you. Okay, so let's measure this one. Keeping my line straight, I'll mark that, but I know that I'm going to come in a little bit, okay? Uh, hi everyone, please tell me this will be available, yes, it's recorded, you will be fine. I can't, I don't put your email addresses on here or anything for the newsletter, go on to vickybooten.com and you will get a box that pops up that you can sign up for the newsletter. Because I'll be completely honest with you, friends, there's no way I'll have time to go through and then manually add you. So I would really like if you can try to add yourself. If you have an issue and you aren't getting the newsletter, that's when I can go in and manually add you. Not because I don't completely love you guys. It's just I'm telling you the reality, right? We need a scrapping nook reunion. We do. The video is being recorded. Awesome. So now you have this crocodile. When you look at your crocodile, you have two different sizes of hole punch. You can do things too. See this here? You could decide, remember we said kind of a half inch, and you could set your binding, like how deep this will go in, so I could really set it up to my seven eighths. I'm gonna try it, let's give it a try. And then you just turn the little wheel, and it will set how deep this will go in when I punch the hole. So I've set it at seven eighths. So even though I made that mark, it'll be good for placement. But see, when I press this down, this is where it will punch. This is where it sets an eyelet, okay? So just make sure you're going on whatever eyelet size you have. I'm using the wider eyelets. Um, they're called uh, 0.5 centimeter or 0.1875 standard eyelets. And let's see if that works. Do, 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 do. I'm going to say it works, right? And I'm lining it up right underneath it and punching the hole. Perfect. So that is perfect. It worked. I just need something to get that out so that I can see what I was doing. Yes, until I have extra help around here, just so you know. So I sell kits online. I have my own website that we sell kits and classes. And I do the same video, this idea of what you're watching, I do as a private video for the kits that I sell online. So we have one coming up that's called the Ex Christmas Extravaganza Weekend. That will be layouts and I want to make sure if that's the same will be layouts and an album. And then the other one I have is going to be all based around my new release with American Crafts. That will be the Storyteller Weekend. And um, those album, that kit sold out like in, I don't know, less than a weekend. I will be posting 
a few more of those. So if it's something you missed out on, you're just going to have to watch. I will email it on my newsletter and let everybody know and I'll post it in the group page. I got an email. Somebody was mad. They're like, I try to order your stuff all the time and it's always sold out. There's not much I can do about that because I can try to order more, but I did all of that as a pre-sale. So that one is like, I, I can't order a ton and let it just sit in my website because that's money right and this is a small business it's too hard what if we don't own a crop a dial hole punch hole punch just like a hole puncher um i had no idea what the crop did that yes this is why i don't try to make you spend money on things you don't need you will never regret owning this tool setting eyelets used to be a thing right do you remember back in the day and we had the um spring eyelet setter where it would go boom and it would set the eyelets or I would be in making memories classes where we had the making memories hammer. And when we had to set high eyelets, the whole room would be like, bang, 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 where we'd set the eyelets. But yes, if you don't have, you can use a poker. I don't have one handy, but like um, an owl would use. So your husband might have one or you might have one in the garage that is like that tiny little screwdriver that you can hammer. You can use an owl. When we get deeper into bookbinding stuff, it's a tool, another one that you will want to own is an owl. Or you could use a hole punch. But this is where then our pages are gonna go in. And if we wanted to move in a little closer to the center, we could as well. You still have the spring eyelet. Look at mine's in the box. This is what I'm talking about. Here's my spring eyelet center. So you would take it and you would do this. And that's what would set your eyelet the bottom of it or top of it broke off, but I totally still have it. Look at there. This broke off of it, but I totally have my eyelet setters. Love it. Okay. So I'm going to use turquoise because it's what I have back in the day when you used to get this in a set, I still have all my original <laughs> eyelets in here. So use whatever colors you want. If you have it, if you do not have eyelets or an eyelet setter, it doesn't matter. You don't have to put an eyelet on here. But I'm telling you, if this is something you're enjoying, it's worth investing the money in. So I'm just going to pick four eyelets. This is what an eyelet looks like. You see these on your shoes or on your belt. Like anything that the string goes through, it just reinforces and makes the hole prettier. So if you're new, that's what an eyelet is. You can order these, okay? I will put it in because I want the pretty side on the outside. So I put it so the ring is on the outside. I'm going to do one at a time because they're just going to fall out when I move it around. Then you take and you have settings, right, that you can set the size of the eyelet in the crocodile. I don't know if it's right, but this is the size that I use. I like that big round one because that's the eyelet I'm using. Um, and then this comes out and has different edges. I like the long one because I can hold my eyelet better. You will put this now so that this part goes on the edge that you want to curl and adhere. So this will fit in with the little, the masculine, the male end will fit into the eyelet like this, right? And then you squeeze. And now look at, I just set my eyelet. Isn't that fun? I love this. I love finished, perfect kind of things. Don't I squeeze really hard. You don't have to squeeze that hard because I did jack the eyelet a little bit. But look how easy that is. Eyelet set, perfect, finished edge on the front and back. I do have eyelets that I will add to the store eventually because I know that they're often sold out at We Are Memory Keepers but I feel like a lot of this stuff is having a comeback. So set all four of my, oops, caught it with my boob, almost fell off the table. Um, yes, we have the hammer, always had to announce banging so it wouldn't mess other people up. Here's the other thing, yeah, it does, because um, if you're working on something like stamping, you would not be happy if somebody at the crop started setting an eyelet. But let me tell you, when this little doodad came out, um, I never use the hammer again because that is way easier. Okay, so I have, I squeezed this one really tight and it made it a flatter eyelet and then these are kind of round. 
and then just decide from mine is words so what the top and the bottom of my book is but there you go there's some binding we just made some binding I have a crop of dial but I still use the old school hammer I love that one and you know and the other thing is you can get the long arm eyelet so say we wanted eyelets in the middle this won't fit so you'd need to use the hammer and a hole punch like um, this one one side of it punches the hole and then one side um, sets the eyelet with the spring one one side punches the hole see this side would punch the hole and then you set you can set the eyelet with the other end that broke off then you could turn it and you set the eyelet um, but you need make sure when you're doing that you have that little um, hard plate because you do not you can set it right through your tabletop so be careful uh, what else was I saying oh there is another style of crocodile that is a long arm one that you can cut deep I have a hard time setting eyelets with that so be very careful if you're using that because I'll jack a lot of my eyelets like they're like Burr. so be careful when you use the long arm one ah uh, boobs come in handy I did I caught the eyelet I just caught it with my boob um, my handheld crocodile broke but my big bite still works yay um, I can't figure out the setting for how to set the eyelets yet. Some of them you gotta just practice, right? The eyelets give it a very nice finished look. True, I totally agree. So now our base is done. You can go and decorate this more, you can embellish it, you could put some washi around the edge. I even brought my bowl of washi somewhere if I wanted to use it today, I don't know. Oh, I do wanna use, where did I put my washi? That is important for the next part. How long have we been at it? So we started, this was an, an hour and a half to do the cover, right? And where's my bowl of washi tape? I need that in a minute, because I want to show you some stuff. And it's drink time, so let me open this, because I'm going to start coughing. Oh, I found it. It's all behind me, so we're good. Hi, Angie, how are you? How are we at? We have a lot of people watching now, yay. So there are a lot of you out there and I know some of you may not have a YouTube or Google account, so you can't comment. But if you can, please leave me a comment. It's really nice when we have almost 300 people watching that um, I just like to see who's out there and where you're from, right? Because that's the best part of crafting as a community. And if you haven't, at um, some point, will you please go and thumbs up the video as well? I'm trying to build this YouTube vid, um, channel back up and start doing some more content. And the easiest way I'll be able to do that is all interaction. It all comes down to interaction, right? You need a new crop of dial, so I might need a big bite. Talk to me, Natalie, and I'll order you a new one when I put my order in. Okay, yay, love how it turned out. When you're done too, guys, go to the Vicki Booten Mixed Media Community Group on Facebook and please post it so I can see what your albums look like when they're done. I love that part. I love when you guys share, or if you post it on um, Instagram, just make sure you tag me. Wherever you're posting, make sure you tag me so I can see it. You're just tuning in. Hello, Paolo Ada. I love it. Hello, Lisa. Love it. So now, remember, I said I have four of my signatures. This is just a book binding term. Look at nothing on the front of this. It's potential. But I'm going to show you when we go to bind this that we will be fine. We can totally do something later because these pages can slide in and out. So I put five of the mixed media backgrounds that were um, 12 by eight, and this one was probably a six by 12 in here to form these pages that will now go in our album, okay? I am going to bind them with embroidery floss. I am hoping it's gonna work. I like the embroidery floss because all the colors that I can get. There is lots of different types of book binding twines we could buy. You could use um, elastic would be a great idea for this. So when you go into the beading or jewelry section, you can find stuff. Isn't that just pretty? Doesn't that make you super happy? That, just looking at that rainbow. And I just went to Michael's and bought a whole bunch of Joann's or wherever you can buy or online and then just bought a whole bunch of colors. So when I put it in the jar, it will all be pretty because <laughs> that's how I roll, right? I will put them in there and I want pretty rainbow of my 
embroidery floss that I probably already own 20 of these, but um, I went and bought new ones. So I'm going to take my embroidery floss and that is now how we're going to bind these signatures. Dollarama has lots of colors of elastic right now. Go to Dollarama and buy that kind of stuff up or that's in Canada, so your dollar store. Um, whatever you want to do. I'm gonna try this and we're gonna see if it's thick enough and it works. I feel like it will, but we'll know. We'll know once I do it, so I will test it for you. So I'm gonna stick to pretty much keeping it. I don't want rainbow in this. I want this to not be, um, this is a supporting cast of all my pretty art pages. So I'm okay with going neutral with this one. There's lots of ways we can bind, okay? I thought this was just super easy that everybody should be able to find what they need, okay? So this, we will, we will um, experiment with lots of different things, but um, they do have the perfect stretch for binding journals. That's what I'm saying. You can totally go in and buy um, elastic, um, like something with some elastic in it. You could bind this with leather twine, a lot in the jewelry making section you could find, okay? And like I said, you can go on Amazon and buy lots of different, um, when you start looking at book binding tools, that owl that I talked about, owl, however you say it, I think it's A-W-L, isn't that how that's spelt? Uh, you'll want one of those tools because if we get into like Coptic stitching or anything else eventually, we'll be, we'll be um, looking at uh, a lot of different options. So I know that I'm gonna want this to wrap one, two, three, four, plus enough to tie. So I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just literally gonna eyeball how much I, of this I want, okay? How do I say your name, Miss um, Weaver? Thais, is that how I say Thais? Please spell that out phonetically so I can say it correctly. Hello, Katrina. Oh, I love all you guys here. Hello, is it um, Aline? Aline? Oh my goodness, I'm so bad with I sorry. I, sorry. Um, I massacre the names. So um, if I'm not saying it right, you totally can tell me that, hey dummy, you didn't say that correctly. So I'm just opening this twine because I'm doing this all live with you. I did not prep anything, but I need to, um, it's tied in a knot so you could find the start and the end. And now I just have to try to not make a bigger knot. So just give me a second. And I do not do embroidery. So there may be a way to do these things. I do not know the ways. So I'm just gonna figure it out and do it the Vicky way. Cause it's all good, right? It's all good. Yay! You're all caught up now. Yay, Kimberly. Um, Aline, is that how I say it? A Aline, I love it. Eileen, Eileen, Eileen. Oh my goodness, I'm so bad with the names, I apologize. So I wanted this to stay all pretty, but I know it's not going to, it's gonna get jacked. But whatever, I'll have a nice ball of um, embroidery floss. So I'm going to open this up so I don't make a total mess. And I'm going to start pulling enough of it out. Oh there, there we go. So there is a way. See, I'm not that kind of crafter, just so we know. I would like to learn how to do embroidery, but I do not know. So make sure you cut enough of a piece, right? So that we can tie it and we can bind. So I'm gonna leave that for my tie, so I know that is for one. One, two, three, and four, I'm thinking. So I'm gonna make sure, I don't care, I'll have extra. It's not expensive, right? And I'm gonna cut two of these. So then I will go and measure it and make sure I have two strips of this because that's the binding that I have. There we go. So I have two strings, okay? Or whatever you're using for your binding. And then later I'll make this pretty again because that you guys already know with I don't like to be messy and um, I like my things to stay <laughs> perfect. I can't help it. There's something wrong with me. What is the largest book you've ever made? I've made bigger, like um, eight by, like eight and a half by 11 ones. Um, but you really could make whatever you want. The bigger I get, I would probably try to find a sturdier, um, like a cardboard using like book board. 
because I would like it to be nice and firm. But I can't wait till we do this one, friends. This will be totally my cup of tea. When we go and I show you how to, uh, with the decoupage tissue and rubbing some metallic and stuff on it, we could make this look like leather. Oh, it will be so awesome. This will be fun. You almost miss this. And you know what? You won't miss it because all of this will be recorded. So if you've just found me by chance, you can go in and find it. And like I said, the only thing I ask, please, 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 is go and thumbs up the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So as I post, you will be able to find the stuff, okay? I would love that. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to take this, how many times? I don't know. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna go through so it's on the spine. I'm going to tie all of it is going to be masked on the inside. You could tie it on the outside. You decide kind of what you want to do, right? So I'm going to pull this. So my strings are through it. So I went through the top eyelet and the bottom eyelet. Okay. And now we're going to get ready with one of my signatures. So just make sure it's kind of all laid out, right? That's the center of it. And I told you that I, is this, this one might not, oh, it does have five. One, two, three, four, five. So I took it, right? I folded it and then layered what I wanted in my signature. So that's what's happened here. Some are white, some have paint and pigment and pattern. Like, look at that one is when we did the contained glitter. This is one of the ones that we did with all of it with distress inks. Decide how you want that. And then you're going to put it like this right? And we're going to tie this in. So we can decide because maybe because the string is not super tight, right? I think it'll be fine though. I feel like, and no, this is not tight binding. Like when we do the um, hills and valleys type binding and we glue it to the seam, that is, uh, let me grab that album. Give me a second. The Japanese owl works fabulous for punching holes, 100%. It's something once I get you guys into full on book binding, I will encourage you to buy. But a lot of the ladies here are scrapbookers. We gotta start out somewhere, right? Just a sec, friends. Can I find it? Yes, I can. I'm coming back. So if you search on my, this one is not glued down, so I'm not showing you that one. If you search through my YouTube videos, we did this one before, Mixed Media. And this is the other binding option that we had. These are all pockets. And we did binding that is actually secured in the album. So this is another one. If you search here on um, YouTube, you will find how I did this album out of another whole bunch of mixed media using all Vicky Booten mixed media. Isn't that fun? So this is on my YouTube channel where we made our own journal, but this is permanent. Once these pages are in here, this is what you get is what you get. Different type of binding cover made pretty much the same way. Okay. Now with this one, those pages are going to move around a little bit. You need to go and tie this really tight. And I'm decided I'm committing to, um, look at, I'm pulling my string though. So I have lots left over. Pulling the string. So only what I'm tying now in the center is going to be there. So there's lots of different things. You could put it and tie it up here and add beads. I just want it kind of hidden inside the page. So I'm not making this one fancy. I'm literally just going to pull this really tight and tie now, and then I can snip. So you do whatever. For this one, I just want basic. We're going basic this time. There's lots of fancy stuff we can do down the road, but for right now, we're going to go in here, and I'm going to tie this in a knot very tight. It's nothing to be fancy. It's just my binding, okay? So pull it nice and tight. And then I'm going to, with my fingers holding that in place. Oh, did I? Oh, I lost my tightness. So let's see. Vicky, you ding dong. 
but it's still good. Look, that's good. I'm happy with that, All right? And now you can decide where you want that. You can move it up if you want it kind of in the middle, whatever, okay? And then we can just, I'm gonna do a double knot too. I don't trust that that's strong enough. Uh, you're a subscriber? Yay! Did you just subscribe? Please do that. And there's lots of you watching. Please go and like the video, thumbs up it, and subscribe because like I said, we're going to be doing lots more. Lots more is coming. So I'm going to put two signatures in each one of these holes. So I'm going to go in now and do the exact same thing through that binding hole. So I'm going to have one section here and I'm going to have one beside it. Okay? You could leave this and do all of them as separate signatures. So I could go through and have done um, eight eyelets and done four across. But the, here's the magic with this binding style. So say I wanna take this page out and do something, I could slide it out, I could paint on it and slide it back in. And I'm gonna show you a bonus once we get the binding done of a different way to add pages, okay? I love it. I love, love, love that you guys come and you do the thumbs up, do it at the end. Like I said, I'll put links to everything at the end so you can find all of the things that I'm using. Oh, here's what I want to talk about. Decide what you want to go beside this. Like what order do you want these to go in? I don't want, I'm going to split it up because I use the same stencil on this. So I don't want them side by side. So I'm going to put this one in with this and make this um, signature on that side. So we're gonna do the same idea, okay? Open this up, like I said, I have a whole mix of magic of things I've just cut up and used in here. And like I said, I can go in and do pockets, do lots of things later. Um, yay! I've been subscribed for about three months and I know, and you're probably like, I'm subscribed, but she never adds any new content. It's because I do so much on Facebook, but I do want to start filling the YouTube channel because um, I just think that more people will find us here on YouTube than they will on Facebook. So it is a goal. It's a goal I'll work towards. So the content will come, but I am very passionate about what I do and love sharing it with you guys. So do you see what I just did? I fed it through again. So see what it's gonna look like on the outside. You're gonna have these. So can I tell you something that would be fun? For this one, I'm just doing basic, but there's no reason when I fed this through, I could bead. I could add beads on there. Wouldn't that be fun? So we'll do that in another video, but you totally could add things onto the string. But even if you didn't, you could put a jump ring through here and you could add onto the string. For today, it's enough, but I will come back and I'll show you that in another video. But we need to start somewhere. And I think, like, don't do too much the first time around. Just get the things done, and then you can always come back. So look it. I'm putting a second signature in here, so I don't have too much bulk in that one. But like I said, we can always come back and add more pages. So I'm going to pull this tight, and let's see if I'm not a dork, and I can actually make it happen this time without moving it. So this is so much fun. Are you guys having a good time? Even some of you that are like ironing while you watch or um, watching your grandkids or doing something. Natalie's working on um, other stuff, other design team stuff. So, uh, oh, the other thing that's fun, my ladies um, that help me on my design team will be getting their storyteller. I'll be mailing it next week. So I can't wait. That's what's going to be coming next is a whole bunch of storyteller inspiration so for all of you guys that have bought my new collection with american crafts that literally sold out in a week and is all on reorder coming in november um, i'm going to be making projects out of it so we'll have some inspiration going along look at friends how fun look at the things we can do so look at there is one section and it is not meant to be perfect this is our junk journal binding Oh, love it. Super fun. Super easy. I think this is one of the easiest ways to make a book. So let's go in and do this section now. And like I said, there's no reason. Watch. Now with this binding type, look what I can do. I totally can add more pages. So this is great if you follow along with all the mixed media craziness I make you do. 
Now you're going to have somewhere to put it. Because a lot of you ladies need purpose. You don't have trust yet. Like, why am I doing all this stuff? What am I going to do with it? Look what you can do with it. You can do whatever you want. Oh, I love it. So let's go in and put the other side in. I want this first. So much fun. Right? And like I said, not reinventing the wheel. This is not new. There are tons of binding videos for probably the last... 10 or 15 years. I might have to try this for a smaller version for Storyteller. I'm ordering a big crocodile on Amazon. I love it. So yes, and I'll go put, like I said, links to all of the things so you guys can find everything I've talked about. And as always, thank you for um, when you follow my links and with the affiliate stuff. Because like I said, this is how I'm able to do all of these free classes and all of the Facebook Lives are literally, because um, this is my job, this is my full-time job, is the affiliate links are what helps me pay the bills, right? So I'm okay with being here on a Sunday afternoon when my family's all out there doing stuff. I will come and hang out with you guys, and that's where the affiliate links, for any of us artists, because you'll see them on most of the people who do a lot of these videos, have those links. It costs you nothing, but that's how we make a little bit of extra money when you say shop through scrapbook.com or Amazon, all of that stuff, right? It just helps. Every little bit helps. So I'm going to tie this in. That was wonky. I don't know what I was doing there. Lining it up with my two binding holes so it's straight. And I'm going to tie it nice and tight. Put my finger on it because this is wonky. If you have a little bit of dexterity issues, get someone to help you. Call your husband, your daughter, your son, over somebody, your friend, and say, can you hold that and then tie your knot? Because this is much easier to do with two people than with one. But look what I'm doing. I'm pulling it really tight before I lift my finger and then commit, okay? And then commit. Um, thanks for the reminder about affiliate, right? That's why um, I would prefer when we're on videos that people don't link stuff because I'll go in and put the links. Like, you know, I, I'm not going to be mad at you if you do it. A lot of people don't know. But when I put my affiliate links, if you're going to be shopping anyway, it costs you nothing. And then um, it helps pay the bills, right? And some people I know don't use them. They will look at the link and then just go find it on their own. I used to do that because I didn't understand what they were in the beginning. I'm like, is that going to track it? Like, does that mean now that Big Brother can watch me? It has nothing to do with that. The link only links back to my um, share a sale. So you are fine. Yay! Let's put one more and then let's look at this baby and I'm going to show you the little bonus thing, right? Or trying to... Um, or try using a clip to hold while you knot. Very smart, very smart, Sherry. Reverse tweezers work, yes! And I sell those on my shop. I have them here. We should look at that. I have them right over there. I have reverse tweezers. Thank you for all these tips. I'll go through and read these. You guys are so smart. This is what is um, magic about this community of crafters, right? Just so you know, I'm switching this because I feel like those flowers look like they're upside down. So I'm going to put that one in there, is how much we learn from each other, right? Isn't it awesome when you're crafting and uh, like on our community page, you guys will go and post a question and how many people are right there to help you. I love it. Um, at the top, there is the like button. So yes, can you see it right now while you're watching the video? See the little thumb with there's a number 176 beside it? You just click that and that will be the like. To subscribe, um, I don't, where is the subscribe? I think it's when you're out of here, right? When you're just looking at the Vicki Booten um, uh, YouTube page, you just go on there and you can subscribe. And then whenever we're doing these little videos, make sure you set the reminder. There's a little bell and that will let you know when I'm posting anything, right? Yeah, so it's super helpful and it's how um, we get people to find these videos. Because like I said, it is, if you're spending the time doing it, you want everybody to come and have fun with us. 
That's why I look at it. Like, I know that I'm very thankful for everything I learn on YouTube. Like, how do I unclog a drain when you have a daughter with, like, very long hair? Where do I go? YouTube. I always watch YouTube videos, right? We learn so much on here. We're so lucky in this day and age to be able to have content and information so readily available. Like back in the day, even in my day, I would have had to go to the library. There was no searching it anywhere. You were lucky if you had some extra books at home and the encyclopedias we used to order. But we used to have to go to the library to learn anything. Nowadays, like holy crap, anything we want to discover is at our fingertips. We are very lucky. You know, we have our drawbacks for modern technology, but a lot of pluses that the things that we can find out. And if you are an information junkie like I am, I love learning new things. We are very lucky. And YouTube and even Facebook are great formats and um, tools to find the info that we need. Someone will know better, but on phones, I think you have to go onto the chat. Yes, I, I don't know because I'm just looking on my, um, so please help with that. But thank you. Um, if you do, I do very much appreciate when you do the thumbs up, the likes. I know that we'll get some that will do a thumbs down because people just like to do that. But I've learned to not really look at that stuff because you can't make everybody happy. But if you make the majority happy and somebody gets something from this, that's awesome. So look at something, friends. I totally could go in this book, depending on how thick you want it, and you could do a whole other signature in the middle of this. You totally could go in here and add another one. But this is what it looks like right now. Look at that. So all of that fun art that we made, we just made our own customized junk art journal. I love this. And now I'm going to show you something. Okay. So I am totally digging this, aren't you? So fun. Right? And I'm okay if all my pages aren't even. I may go in here like a crazy person and watch. So I won't do that one because I love that page. But things that we can do. And I'll show you guys some of this later. But I could take a page like this and I could make a side pocket just by folding it over. Let's just make one. I don't want it that big. Let's make it like this. Scoring it. Taping the top and bottom. Here we go. Showing you the things. Oh, I love paper. Paper is my friend. And during quarantine, here's the magic. Um, almost everything we did today, you could probably find easily around the house, order on Amazon, go to the dollar store. There is nothing there. The only things I guess like the crocodile and that kind of stuff is definitely a tool. Um, but you totally could do this stuff with stuff you have at home. So that's double sided tape. I want to show you something quickly. So now if I want to work in my book, and maybe I don't want this all white, let's do something very fast. So these are the new stencils that came out with Storyteller. Okay, I don't know which set this is. Maybe one of you guys can help me. But I'm going to put that on here. And just so it's not all wonk, I'm going to show you something. I love different size pages. I would end... I'm telling you, I'm going to show you something next. So watch. I'm going to wrap that with our teeth. And I'm going to show you some things. I'm just tracking that down so it doesn't move on us while we're working. Okay. And now I'm going to grab. We did this all with distress. So we might just stick with, might as well stick with distress. What color? Pinks and yellows. So let's just do something that's. Oh, I'm going to go crazy. Here we go. Grabbing myself an ink blending tool and some ink. And I'm going to link this later, but this is your friend. I'm going to link the scrapbook.com ink blending tools. I love them. So I will put a link to that because, can I tell you something? That domed foam is magical. So I have taken Wilted Violet, 
a stencil and this is one of the new storyteller stencils that I will link to after and look it so I don't have to pull the page out but maybe I want to put something for this little pocket I'm making so I'm just gonna go in here and put a little bit of a pattern using a stencil what stencil should you buy every single pattern that you love there is not a better tool to me for mixed media than stencils because all the artwork's done for you and you do not have to be a Picasso to figure out how to use this. Watch how quick that was. Oh my goodness, look what I just did. So now, remember I have the tape. I'm making a side pocket here. So this ink is uh, still wet, but because it didn't come right to the edge, I'm fine. I'm gonna take this now and fold it over. And now we've just created a little bit of interactive in our album that I can then take something. Look at, ta-da, right? And now like this bothers me, so let's do something quick because we can do all the things. So these are the new um, washi tapes with uh, Storyteller, which seriously blow my mind. I'm absolutely in love with them. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna layer some washi. Just because, see how this matches? I don't like that. But maybe I don't wanna get into doing a whole bunch of stuff, so why not just pull a piece of washi tape and do it this way so my numbers aren't upside down. Stencils and stamps. I tell you, I would tell people like you don't have ever have too many stencils or stamps because you pick the ones that you love. And I, like I say, if you get into mixed media, don't buy like the mouse in the teacup or things that are very, um, to me, card specific. You can still buy them if you love them. But I'm saying for mixed media, you want stamps that are like this good background stamps. This is a storyteller set. I make stamps with specific thoughts in mind. Like if I have things that I can stamp multiple times and layer. So this is a new set that came out with my release. And look, this is what we did this Friday. We made a layout out of just mixed media. It's not glued down yet because I'm delinquent because I work nonstop. But look at what we made. I can't mess it up. This entire layout is all mixed media. There's no pattern paper on it. So this is what I try to tell people. You can do all of the things, but don't be too um, specific in some of the stamps that you buy. You want very simple, like, oh, my friend Tim Holtz. Like these are the ones that you need to add to your collection. This kind of thing, right? Magic can happen. And it doesn't have to only be on a tag. You totally, as a paper crafter, can use all of this stuff. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna snip. Like I said, friends, I could teach and teach. We could go on and on and on. And that's why make sure that you are um, subscribed here. Come and find me on YouTube at Vicki Booten Artist because I do Friday Night Lives. I'm gonna start where I can, when I do the live, um, I'm going to start doing it so it's here on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. So I know there's an app I can use and I'm going to do that so you could watch it on both platforms. And then I just find that it will grow our cult. I mean, our community. <laughs> I'm going to put a second row there. Okay. We do a lot of fun, 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 fun things. And a lot of you guys have found me during COVID. You did not even know me before. Some of you have been with me for years because I have been doing this paper crafting as a job for um, I think 18 years. I have worked with all the magazines. I teach all over the world. I've traveled all over the place for years because I love teaching. And I have my own line with American Crafts. So when I'm showing you some of this stuff, that's me, Vicki Booten. This is my new release. And when you find it, if you're just finding me for the first time, um, you're going to want to buy it because it's sold out. It is, I don't know, it's crazy. 
you never know what's going to be um, what's going to resonate with people and this one really did so look what I just did so already in our album there's just ways that you can alter some of these pages and change them the other thing I want to show you is how we can add other things to this journal so I have a mess everywhere, and you've, we've already established that that bothers me. So let me tidy up a little bit, and I'm going to show you something else. Two things, okay? We still need our washi, because I'm going to do this with washi. Am I missing? Let me ask. Okay, any questions? I bought your product, but found your teaching through Scrap Happy. Yes, I love the Scrap Happy event I did. I can't wait to get mine. Love those lives. Um, so I'm looking now. So if I missed any of your questions, let me know. Okay, friends, and I'll answer it. Thank you for the likes and thumbs up. You guys are the bomb. Because I know some people watching, it's just, it's, you got to do the business side of things, right? For me, it certainly isn't a popularity thing. I don't care if it was just three of us on here. But um, it certainly helps from the business perspective of what I do. Okay, so I grabbed some stuff. I grabbed some stuff because we can talk about, like, there's no reason, like, say, here, this is why. I'm going to show you why you might want black in here. So now I know that um, it needs to be, I would say my sides would be, um, it needs to, well, as long as it will fold and can fit on both sides of the album, right? So whatever width you're doing, because these are all going to be folded, let's do. I'll just show you. Let's just do. So I know it can't be any higher than eight inches. Where's my paper trimmer? And then we're gonna be done for the day, okay? But look it. I know that I'm gonna cut this. Let's say I'm gonna put one in there that's slightly smaller. I'm gonna put the height of this one at seven inches, okay? And I'm gonna turn it. I don't want this one to be exactly. So let's say it's going to be I'm going to cut it at 10. So this is 7 by 10. I'm going to take this one and score it. So one of the pages is 5. No, more less than that. One of the pages is maybe 4 and a half, and then the other one will be wider. I am going to put a score in this. And I can add it into my album, but I want to show you something fun. Okay, so now this can be a page I can add because that's the magic with this binding is we can add pages because it's not perfect or permanent. You love this vellum, right? Yes, this was out of, which release was this out of? Oh my goodness, isn't it terrible? I don't remember what came with what, um, but I love this vellum. Wait till you see the new one and the one in Storyteller is beautiful and punchable. I can't wait to start, see? Like these are things in Storyteller. I can't wait to start making some art with this. So one of the free classes that will be on here, did you see with Storyteller, there's a tag book, a tag journal book. I'm gonna do as a free class, a whole tag journal book class on here because I find that those books um, don't translate well online. So I feel if I do a free class with it, you guys will see why I love tag books. Wildflower and honey, it might be, is it? Wildflower and honey, color kaleidoscope. Oh my goodness, I don't even know, friends. Isn't that terrible? What a terrible marketer I am. But look it, can I show you something? And I'm not gonna get anything new out. I'm just gonna put this on here. So this is the other reason I love oxides because they, because it is, um, oh my goodness, I just, a hybrid ink. It will show up beautifully on black. So, and the lighter colors will be even more vibrant, but look it. This is why you might want black in your de-stress with distress. And if you put this on, let this layer dry, and then go on and put some more ink on, you really could build your um, intensity of color. This is like a Halloween vibe on this page. And this stencil is from Storyteller. And I will put, like I said, links later. But look at how fun is that? So now I'll let this dry for a second, but we can't waste. So I'm teaching you one of those things that I do. So I have this, right? I'm not going to waste this ink. So let's put something down so I don't put water all over my table. 
and we're not going to waste this. We're going to stick it on one of the pages. So I'm going to mist on this because that's the magic with distress is it's water reactive. And let's find a page in this book that needs something. Oh, I think it's going to be perfect right here. And I'm going to take that like this and kiss it down. And don't let that move. I need a paper towel, so let's grab one. It's dirty, but it's still magic. And we can go in here and do this. I'm not going to completely lift it off, but let me show you. So see what will happen? I will have this really pretty pattern in the background. But let's give her a little bit. You could rub your brayer on there. And now this is one of those my favorite stamping things is I'm going to go in there with another color. What do I have handy? Uh, that looks like you cannot mix um, oxide ink. Okay, friends, you cannot mix oxide. So make sure when you do it, like I know that one is broken china. I have my stencil still in place and there's no reason I can't go in here and add second color through my stencil stamping and I could also which I'm gonna do because I can it's my page you can do whatever you want there's no rules I'm gonna give it a little blast just to blend out my ink a little bit press my paper on here that I could have closed my book and picked this up but look at Neek. let's do it what are we gonna get oh I love it isn't that pretty we don't waste anything with Vicki Booten. And now my stencil's clean, so I love that. And you saw that ink blending tool, why I love them. I love scrapbook.com too, though. And the cherry on top has lots of stuff coming in too. Now, um, you have to watch, because this is wet, right? So we could heat gun it, or let's just see what happens when I press another page, how much will transfer. So I will use that as something later on. So look how fun. I love it, right? So see this page, I did two. So you have that. So one more thing. I'm gonna show you one more thing, how to make one more signature. But um, is this album done? No, I'm gonna be able to add to it forever. See what I was saying? You can totally embellish this um, string on the outside. Love it. Okay. Oh, and this one should be dry enough now. Let's add it somewhere. So this is the magic with finding the center of your signature and then decide where do you think black would be cool in the album and just slide it in. Maybe. I did put it in pretty tight, so slide it in. And this is how we can add another page to our signature. Isn't that fun? So one side is going to be longer and one side will be shorter. And there we go. Look at that. Love it. One more. Um, what weight kind of paper did you use? This is all pretty much foundations paper. Let me grab a pad so you see. So friends that are out there who have been with me for a long time, please explain to my friend B that foundations paper is the holy grail. When you see it, you buy it, it sells out almost immediately. I'm gonna find you a full pad so I can show you what it looks like. I'm walking away. Where are you, foundations paper? I have 12 million pads because I use it all of the time. But do I have a full pad around here that has not been used? I don't know. Somewhere I do. Oh, but you need to see it. So when you go to shop, you would know what you're looking for. Give me a second, friends, because of course, because I want one, I don't have one here. But I know there's one outside the room. So if anybody joins, I haven't left. I'm just looking. Did you bring the foundation pad down, paper down? My handy dandy helper, Rich, my husband, is gonna grab one so I can show you. 
But this paper is foundations paper. It's 140 pound. So do you see how you don't get any buckling? Like this is heat embossed and inked and painting, painted, and you still have nice, clean paper. That's why this is so thick and there's not much in it because it's the foundation. So it's part of my line with American Crafts. And there's the craziness foundations paper. Literally, every time they order it in, it, it literally sells out in a day. Just to give you an idea, so I posted it on vickybooten.com, which has very few shoppers. It's not a, it's just my website where I put my class kits and stuff. Um, I put a hundred pads on and it sold in under, I think it was about two minutes. They were gone. So it is a fun paper and I love it, I think too. It's elusive, right? What, what would we call that? Like, what is the animal that's like elusive? What is the one that duck-billed platypus or something, right? Unic it's a unicorn. So I'm going to show you another option. Oh, I have two things I want to show you. You ready? Let's do this first. It is elusive. So I have this book. So you got to watch, right? Because this one is like, I cut them up, I do. But it's Black Widow, East of Eden, Karen, The Curve and the Tusk. So you got to watch because like what it says on here, you beast, she said, animal, perhaps we both are animals. She looked at him with eyes wide with meaning. That is something else he'll remember, she thought. She heard her husband returning and bent forward. So do you see what I'm saying? How watch. is that? Because I cut book pages out. So I'm saying just watch what your book pages say. When I was in France, I loved to go to... Um, to uh, the flea markets, but my whole thing is I don't read in French, so I'm always hoping that the book is appropriate when I cut book pages out, but anyway. So this is foundations paper. It comes with 12 sheets. This rainbow page we use and we'll put, like you could totally put as a signature or we could make a shadow box, like awesome things out of this. And then the pad is actually just blank pieces of bright white, um, smooth uh, art paper so that's foundations when you see it you buy it it doesn't last okay the unicorn paper it is and who knew it just was something I was um, when we did this line I was very oh look how pretty this old readers digest and I know some of you guys would probably have a heart attack that I'm cutting out a bit but um, for me as an art uh, maker I love Rich. My goodness, he just burped around the corner. What the heck? He forgets that, yes, I'm sure. I don't know. Look, at we can all be Karens, because here, this whole thing is about Karen. But let's just pick. Like, I've already cut out the back, so I will cut out of curve the tusk. And I'm going to cut two pieces, and we're going to make a signature out of book paper. Um, I've fallen in love with foundations paper and use it in all your mixed media. I really do love it. Um, what book is this? I buy them when I go to um, like uh, thrift stores or garage sales. Buy old books because it is the best stuff in the world like for making mixed media. So I will take my, let's look, show you why I love this one. So this is the new um, Supreme Ruler, but this center bar holds the ruler so it doesn't move on you. And I have to say, if you like to use an X-Acto knife, this makes it kind of magic. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to take my uh, craft knife, and then just cut along oops, the page. It's just a mess, because some of it I tear out, whatever, right? So now a couple pages should come out of that with that one cut. And we're going to make a signature out of found objects. So look at it, it's wonky, don't even care. Because now what I will do, we'll make one out of that too, and then we'll be done for reals for the day, okay? You disassemble old books and keep the signature intact. Yes, there's so many things we can do. We can use the uh, cover, we're gonna do lots of things. Lots of things will be coming, okay? 
We have to start somewhere though, and I think this is a good thing. So watch too, because some of these pages could be very fragile, and that's where I would put a squirt of the matte acrylic gel down and brayer it, let it dry completely, flip it and do it to the other side, and now it gives your page stability. So there is that option. If some of these books like um, could be very, like this is very light paper, right? And if it's older, you're going to have, um, uh, it, it could be delicate. That's the point I'm trying to make. So I'm going to take this now and I'm going to make a signature out of it. So I'm going to make sure that I have a straight edge. So let's do this because I didn't cut straight, right? So I'm just going to do that. Move it in. And now we are going to use why you never have enough washi. Don't let your husband or anybody tell you you have too much washi because they're a liar. You can buy all the washi in the world. Yes, I use the covers as well. Rosario, 100%. So I'm gonna take this washi and I want the piece to be big enough so I can go front and back. And I am going to center it over this as close as I can. I don't care if it's perfect. Pick it up and I'm going to Put it on the back side. Again, trying to go as straight as I can. And we can make a signature now out of, oops, eek, watch this. Like the paper is very thin, right? And now you can see how straight you actually folded. But I don't care, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You could get finicky with how. But like I said, it would not be a bad idea because I already ripped this a little bit that this is you could totally seal this whole signature with your um, matte acrylic gel and I, I don't think it's a bad idea right you could color it a little bit like here let's do the things because we can so if I wanted to put a little bit of pigment in here I could totally then go in and do some ink on it if I wanted to, whatever you want to do, right? And then you could seal it after. I don't want to seal it right now though because it never will dry. Like we're never going to get to see this finish. So let's just do that. I will pull my heat gun out because now it's wet and show you do, do, do. and then we're done for the day and that wasn't too bad but you know when I get on here they're not ever short we're on here for a long time but there are so many things and a lot of you guys out here are um, total novice this is all new some of you are kind of intermediate crafters and some of you are very advanced so some of what I'm doing you might be looking at and going well I've been doing that for years. But my whole thing as coming into the mixed media world, selling a product line, was I feel like in this industry, there's lots of moderate to advanced and there's hardly any beginner. So I like to start everything with the basics, right? Gotta start somewhere. So we do the basics first and then after I get you guys comfortable we go into the more of the advanced stuff. So here's the thing. For some of you guys who are more advanced, this video might not be for you, but in two weeks, I could be doing something that you're like, oh, I see more value in that. But um, I really believe that this is art for everyone. There is not one person out there who could not accomplish the things that we're doing with Vicky Boot and Mixed Media. You guys could accomplish and achieve all of these with a little bit of practice, play, and giving yourself grace. So just so you know, like I said, I'm not reinventing the wheel, but we have to start somewhere. I'm going to put it here. I think that one will be pretty here. So now, look, I just made a signature at a book paper, and I'm going to try not to tear it because it's still delicate book paper. But these are things that you could totally add. And like I said, if I rip it, I'm sorry, but you get the gist, right? This paper is, this book is very old. So I have to be careful. But I got it in. I did the things. 
Look how fun now, friends. You can add anything. One more thing and we're done. But I think, and I agree with you, Stacy, 100%. There is, like, I will learn something new every single time I watch one of somebody's videos. I never go on there saying I'm, I know all of the things because we don't know all the things. And why would you ever shut the door to the possibility of learning something new? I don't. So you will find that I am very much like, I'll try it because who knows? I might learn something I didn't know before. And I'm totally okay with that. I find it's hard and it's, it's hard with people who um, have done this for a long time that uh, we get a little bit set in our ways. And I think don't shut the door to the opportunity to learn something new. Every video I watch, they might do something that I never thought of. Like, oh my goodness, I've been scrapbooking forever, but I never even knew that trick with your crocodile or whatever, right? So let's go add this guy in here, vellum. We could totally add a vellum layer. So where do I want it? Maybe in here, I'm gonna put it here. So I tore one side. And now I can add a vellum layer and then find it on the other side so it's easier to pull through. Do, 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 do. That Jason Derulo TikTok song is in my brain. There we go. Okay, and pull it through. Oh my goodness, friends, the possibilities are endless. And we could totally fold this, tape it. I'm doing it, I'm doing the things. And you could make, I'm not gonna do it right now, but you could make a pocket out of this. So now we could put a little white piece of paper in there and we have a side pocket or a top pocket. Let's do it. So the unfortunate thing is, is the adhesive I'm gonna use, we might see through it, but watch, I'll fix it. Look at, I can never stop. I keep telling you we're done for today and I keep going, but this one more opportunity to show you something. So now I'm going to take my adhesive and put a piece at the bottom. We could have washi this too, but I will washi on top if I can see my adhesive through it. And she just keeps on going. This was so much fun today. I really enjoyed this. It turned out even better than I had intended. And what a gift is that? Right? Did that make sense? What a gift it was. It was a gift. Like I said, I wish that I could hear you guys because that would make it even more fun. You always learn something new. Um, I've been following you forever. I love that. See, Diana? So you're saying that even though you've been doing this stuff with me forever... That's what she's saying. I look, it totally didn't line this up, so it's gonna be a little jacked, but it's fine. That's what you do when you're on the fly. Some of this stuff just turns out like that. Okay, now watch. I can take this piece that I made already and the strip I need. Look at my pockets totally jacked because um, you, you have to have it lined up before the adhesive touches or you're gonna have a jacked pocket. I'm all right with that. So my, I'm gonna do two and a quarter. Two and a quarter for my insert because I know that adhesive is gonna take up room inside the pocket. And I want, I can move this down and I can put that in here and I'm gonna cut it about there. And I'm gonna eyeball it and look what we just made. A little vellum pocket. That's a little tight. You might want smaller. But look, I can't even see the adhesive, so it's all magic. There we go. Isn't that fun? Fun, fun, fun. And I won't waste this piece. I'll just stick it in somewhere. But I'll turn it this way this time. So let's find another vellum. Like, let's show you what it looked like on the other side. There's the torn edge. How fun is that, right? And you can go through here, and you can add washi tape and photos and journal, and you could make some of these so you can make this whole thing naked if you wanted to and put your art in, on as you go right if that's what you wanted to do there's no reason you can't and i'm going to fold this one and make it another page just because i have it here why waste it and i kind of want it on my rainbow page because rainbow and iridescent makes me joyful 
So let's do that. So there's the front of my signature. Where are you, back of my signature? Right there. Because look at what I'm going to get. Rainbows, butterflies, and unicorn happiness. And anybody who knows me knows that that will bring me joy. So can I? This might be too tight. I might be. I'm pushing my luck. I'm going to go in here, maybe. Can I? Maybe I'm just going to go right in the center, right here. <laughs> Just because it's all I feel like at this point. I'm tired now, right? So there. Now we have, oh, look how fun. A little vellumy piece. Fun, right, friends? So there. You can embellish this any way you want. You could leave it just as it is. But now we have just made, out of all of our de-stress with distress, when Tim and I went to a party, me and Mr. Holtz, and we made all of these fun backgrounds, which you guys have been doing with me for years. Now you have purpose. So if you are crafters who need to actually make something, I don't need to make anything out of anything. I'm quite happy to just make a mess and make something pretty and never use it for anything. Because I love the process of making is just as um, beneficial to me and my mental health and my creative soul as uh, making a project out of it. So there are no rules. You do whatever works for you. Can we see your collection of mini albums? One day I should do, right? Paige does that, and that's such a great idea. Like, look, at this is the other one we made. And we had done all these backgrounds, all with art crayons and Vicky Booten. All of this was done with um, Vicky Booten product. So, yes, I love them. And I have a lot of mini books. Like, it is my favorite thing to make. You guys know, I, do, I would never make 12 by 12 again. I only do it for you guys. I do not care about 12 by 12. I love small. I love things that, look at everything that makes me happy is in this album. I watercolored, I stenciled, I use mixed media. I could put photos in here. I could journal, I can stamp on it. I could leave it just like this and have it just as a recipe technique book and be completely happy. I, I probably will never add anything to this because just looking at this makes me remember sitting and making this stuff with you guys and it makes me very happy. But if I did want to make something out of it, I could. There's no rules, right? But yes, make the things. Find your joy. You can do all these things. If you're out here watching for the first time and you're like, I love it. I am not talented enough to make this. I say liar. You could do all of these things and I will help you. It's what we're here for. Our community will help you. And let me tell you, during COVID and being quarantined, this has been my sanity saver. And we talk about those things on our lives. It is not always rainbows and butterflies. I think this week, I'm embarrassed by it now because I was very um, forthcoming. I had a really hard week this week and um, just because I'm out here and I put myself out here, sometimes it's hard because um, my feelings get hurt easily. I'm very soft. So I talked about that and then I've had nightmares about it since, like bad dreams about the fact that I shared things that I don't really like to share and now I'm embarrassed, right? I embarrass myself. But this is a whole part of this whole community is all of this. And I'll go through and read your comments. When, as soon as we're done with the live, this will go into where you see the comments are up the right side. They'll all now, any comments after the fact, still comment, even if you aren't watching this live, please. Even for everybody who's here, as soon as we're done with the live, I would love if you still go and leave a comment in the actual comment section. Because that the comments don't register there until the video live um, video is done. But I would love that because every bit of interaction helps on YouTube for people actually finding these videos. And maybe we help somebody out there who needs something and needs community because there's a whole thing with COVID. I complain that I've been stuck in the house with my family. There's a lot of people who are at home all by themselves. So if this helps you with a little bit of um, feeling like you are in touch and feeling like um, there's somebody out there who's listening, look at this gonna go on here listening or um you need someone to talk to we're here for you so i'm going to do a close-up and i'm going to flip the camera so i can smile at you before we're done but i love how this turned out this was a lot of fun i love doing live videos better than recorded because i love the interaction but all of these techniques if you're looking for it because you love 
you're like, I love the finished album, but how'd she do all that stuff? It's on my YouTube. I will link it in the comments. That's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm going to have a drink and then I'm going to put a whole bunch of affiliate links and list all the products that I used. So if you're looking for it, you can find it. Look how much fun. But we did all of this was all done on my Facebook lives in the videos. And I will link those things. And thanks for Nat for as long as she was here helping me um, to uh, talk about this uh, class and help with links because she is awesome. So I'm just turning my tripod around. I'm going to talk to you for a minute. And now will be the time if you have any questions, let me know. Okay, so if you've wanted to talk to me and I've ignored you. Hi, here I am. So let me put this up. I put the new tripod in. So I had to weight it down. It almost tipped over and fell on me. Um, but let's see. And is there a way, friends? How do I, oops, what did I do? Hmm. How do I get comments on here? Like why, I could see them before. I can't see them now. I don't know why on here. But it would be nice if while I'm watching, I could see them. And when we first started the video, I could see the comments and now I can't. So I have to look over here. Thank you very much, guys, for sitting through our almost four hour, no, three hours, right? We started at one. That's not bad because this is usually how long my classes are, three hours for a class like this, four to five to six hours when we make. Let me grab one, okay? Just one second. I'm coming right back. Sorry, you have to look at my mess behind me for a minute, but I want to share something. I'm coming back. So this is not the actual album, but if you loved this and you want everything kind of in kit form, this is what an idea of what the Christmas kits are like when we do these. So this is an old one. This is not the one for this year but I will be putting this together. And this is the one that's still for sale on vickybooten.com. And it's called the Christmas Extravaganza. And we're gonna make an album like this, but this year's album, this is an older one, and making layouts and it's gonna span a whole weekend. Um, but I love mini books. This is the one that made a lot of people angry cause it sold out, oops, something just fell off of it. Sold out literally in five minutes cause I only had 40 of them. So it was not one that stayed up there for a long time. But if you're digging this and you're like, mixed media is not my thing, but I really love scrapbooking, there's lots of options, okay? But that was fun. Any questions? Did I miss anything? I'll be there. Um, that was awesome. Great to spend time with you. Thank you so much. Please, when you're done, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will put links to my Facebook so you can find me there and my Instagram and vickybooten.com so you don't have to go search for it. I'll put links to the product I use. I'll go read through your comments and I will answer anything that I missed. And I'll see you on Friday for Friday Night Live. Don't know what we're doing, but it's going to be something using Storyteller because I feel like I need to crack this baby open and I have been saving it because I don't have all the pieces. But Friday is going to be Storyteller. And then I think the following weekend is Thanksgiving here in Canada. There will not be a Friday Night Live. Um, I might do something impromptu during the week and I'll let you guys know. But I am going to celebrate my anniversary because we got married on Thanksgiving weekend. So we're going to spend one night in the hotel we got married in. Isn't that fun? So I'll share pictures of that. But I love each and every one of you. I am grateful, thankful and appreciate the time that you spend with me and that you give to me and that you take the chances to find uh, crafts and making that fills your heart and uh, brings you joy. And each one of you bring me joy. So I'm very thankful for you. Thanks for joining me. And uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments and I will answer them after the fact. And have a great rest of your Sunday or if you're in other parts of the world, I hope you're enjoying your Monday and I love you guys. We'll see you later. I don't know how to end this, so let me find it. <laughs> but bye. Thanks so much. We'll see you guys later.